ready? S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Hi! Hi! Hello! Oh. Wow, what a weekend. Fantastic start to the weekend with the PWHL Bay Street Series uh, on Friday, which was amazing. Uh, Maddie was there, so we're going to have a little... Uh, little testimonial for Maddie. I can tell you this. Maddie Corner. I don't think there was a bigger fan of that, uh, of anybody that I know. Maybe Maddie was, is one of them, but CJ was just going off in the chat about how great that was. Fandom CJ rules. He's wasting his time being an insider. No, he should totally just be, he should do a Blue Jays fan reaction. <laughs> he would, I would, he'd buy the company and we'd all work for him. Yeah. If he just did PWHL, Cowboys. Oh, loves the voice. Blue Jays. I, I don't think, though, that anything like when when CJ gets fired, it's, it's amazing. But guys, would you not admit that the Blue Jays, especially last season, nothing got CJ more heated no. or more excited than the Blue Jays? Absolutely not. No. Hockey's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. <laughs> 162 of those. Now, the only problem is we'd have to find a new CJ after like a couple of years because between running and that. I'm sure he'd just give out. Well, I'm pretty sure running is his full time job and the rest is just a hobby. Right? I want, okay. Like TSN, us, The Athletic, it's hobby. Here's the thing. Everything needs to be spawn con, all right? So spawn con? Spawn Sponsored con. Content. Oh, I see. I it's got to be spawn con. Right, right. Keep up. CJ Sorry. Sorry. running laps of the dome, reacting to the game, and he's got to do the videos while he's running around the dome. It's got to be brought to you by someone, and we cover running it in logos room. like a race car. Boom, revenue. Running around around Roger Center? Yes. And the amount In the inside or the outside? No, no, it's gotta be the inside. Okay. So like is he he like he hmm. loses points or something every time he bumps into someone. How long is CJ's run? Uh a minimum five kilometers. Minimum five K okay. every day. What's you did the C in Tower. How how tall is that? Oh the, my god. Well <laughs> it's climbing stairs, so it's different. It's yeah, yeah. uh it's hundred and forty four flights of stairs. I don't think you can't do math like that. It, okay, <laughs> put it this way. How many CN? Uh, I would rather out. run five kilometers. <laughs> How many CN towers should we get CJ to run every day? Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know, I feel like it would be a great, uh, great spot for Rogers to step in. Because then, then he could do like this is how great my Rogers internet works. Well, I tell you about the Blue Jays and how they're driving me freaking crazy right mm -hmm. now. Well, you know, we, he, CJ loves Rogers, so. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. They got a big long Gotta get him in there. <laughs> how tall is, or no, how far is it to Steve's climb the, the CN Tower? I'm not doing math. I'm doing Google. Yeah. Which okay. I have a hard time. What do you time. got? Okay. Every year, thousands of people climb the CN Towers. 1,776 steps. A total of 144 flights in about. 30 to 40 minutes. What's your time? Uh, I don't remember the exact time. It was 1640 something. Oh, wow. So that's half of what Google is estimating somebody should do it. I smoked it. Did I did a you, really good job. How much did you sprint and then you started walking? <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's funny. I trained for it. So I, I did it one year. I got about 19 minutes and I trained for it and I get to the bottom and I'm like, I'm, I'm about to start and I'm like, I, I don't remember how I did this last year. Mm. Like, I don't remember the strategy. So, so I'm like, okay, go as hard as you can for as long as you can. And I knew the number, the magic number is 144. There's 144 flights. I gave her, friggin' gave her for the first 20 flights. And I went, oh, I'm in so much trouble. I got 124 left. Dude, it's hard. I did a lot of it was my arms because I was pulling myself up on the railing. Adam, would you say that that is the dumbest way to tackle 144 flights? It might Imagine care. if I was smart. I did it in under 17 minutes and I did it dumb. How dare you? <laughs> I mean, I've got nothing that I can possibly say that 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 you're absolutely right, Jesse. And but but here's the thing: if if That's you were going to pick a way for Steve to do it, would that not be the way? Yeah, yeah. And no, it's not it because makes Steve's dumb. Sense. It's it not, makes... Steve's quite smart. It's just that yeah. that is not what Steve is smart at. I did no. it the Gronk way, which is <laughs> fuck it, we'll do it live. Yeah, like, just yeah. <laughs> I did it live. Well, it's what is that? I I don't know if this quote is 
is actually Albert Einstein, but basically it was something to, along the lines of Albert Einstein. If you ask a fish to climb a tree, you'll it spend it'll spend the rest of its life thinking it's the stupidest animal alive. Yeah, and I feel like the fish was climbing the tree. Yeah, if you <laughs> ask a Steve Dangle to climb the CN Tower, he'll say "fuck yeah, I'll do it," and he'll do it in under seventeen minutes. God damn it! You've done it twice. It's quite impressive. Twice, not as impressive as CJ's running streak, which is probably the most impressive thing that I know a person in real life has done. That's true, yes. eh? Yeah. yeah. What is it? Six hundred days? Something oh yeah, like over well over two years. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, didn't he get surgery? Like on a yeah. day? <laughs> yeah, there, he had an operation. It was like and day he surgery. still did it. Yeah. No, no, his uh, thumb wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was like oh, it was day like surgery. Surgery. I thought surgery. you said knee surgery. I'm no, like, no, 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 I think day. that might have ended the streak. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, um, I don't know. I know the guy. He's Bill, very determined. It started during COVID, so it's well over three years now. Yeah. We're, we're virgin on four years. Where? When do we yeah. get the 1,000th day? We have to do some sort of celebration. Oh, I think it's got to be. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Because it's over three years. He's, right? The streak has been so long that Shit. Yeah. The, I'm pretty sure it started before the Leafs lost to the Habs, and then mm -hmm. they ended up winning a playoff series. That's how long <laughs> the streak lasted. Uh, has lasted. Uh, has lasted. So I uh, I do want to do a quick shout out to your stream on Saturday night. You fucking should. Uh, so because I did a great job. Explain because because obviously you know obviously we want to do a little bit more of these streams, especially as playoffs coming up and that sort of thing. But uh, some really special things happened. Man, oh man. So like we weren't even supposed to do that stream. We had a stream scheduled for February twenty fourth. That still might happen. We don't know. Um, but there was a scheduling conflict. And so with like less than 48 hours to spare, we all, including producer Drew, made the decision to uh, do a Leafs Ducks stream. Because, I don't know, why not? Huge, why not? Huge rivalry built in there. Uh, cross town rivals, basically. Yeah, hold cross, on. Cross uh, continent rivals. And uh, lots of history between the two teams. Lots of hate. Yeah. Lots of 7 2 losses. Well, uh, you know what? There was some hate. Oh, was there? Radco. Oh, well, Radco. Mm -hmm. You know what? Mm -hmm. I, we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about the game. game. We're not yeah, talking about yeah. the game yet. Hey. Not talking about the game yet. I no, thought the game. No, but yeah, that was awesome. Um, so people were, I was trying to get people to sign up for memberships for this podcast on the YouTube channel primarily, but we're also on Apple Podcasts. We want to drive that. Um, we're we're not on Spotify yet. Have we made progress? There? We can make an announcement there. Whoa! Let's so go. if you go to link right now in the description of this podcast, you'll find a link to SDP VIP on Spotify, and you can't subscribe yet. So oh. <laughs> right now on Spotify, you'll find a new feed for SDP VIP, and the first two episodes of SDP VIP are. Free. Free. Yeah. 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 Free. If you want to go check out SDP VIP, you can go to Spotify, search it up, and you can go listen to the first two episodes free. And in the next, I don't know, let me, I'll give you like a week, it'll become uh, locked as the other content is, and it'll go back to uh, SDP VIP. But then you can subscribe to it on Spotify. But right now, if you want to go listen, it's open and it's free. Hey, I got a better idea. Go to Apple or YouTube and pay for it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, but those <laughs> those come with a free trial. Oh, so essentially, excellent. it's free. This is the free trial we're giving you on Spotify, where it's just open and available to everybody. No now, sign up, nothing. Did we want you to have to have another feed for this? No. But we were but, required to make it. <laughs> yes. the way Spotify operates is that there has to, it does not exist on I, the SDP Steve Dango podcast uh, Spotify feed. It's I am preempting the complaints. Yeah, yes, that's yes. why it took so long. Yeah, now not, these, yeah. for a small business like ours, these subscriptions mean a whole heck of a lot. A lot. And there was a ton gifted on Saturday night, which well, was crazy. So we were, you know, I was driving. I was trying to get people to sign up. We had, we had. I think the number was 827 members on the YouTube channel heading into uh, that game. And I'm like, okay, we're going to go for 900, and it's a lofty goal, but we'd like to hit 1,000. So we're going, we're going, we're going. Second intermission hits, and I messaged them on my Instagram. Uh, I'll, I'll find it over the course of the show. But uh, someone named Ty, here it is. Uh, Thai Canadian, um, real last name. Yes, I, isn't that crazy? Wow, is uh, is Don Cherry's nephew? Yes. <laughs> so Thai Canadian uh, gifted five memberships mm. on the stream, and my reaction was genuine. I'm like, uh, oh, I didn't know you could do that. 
And neither did Adam, and neither did Jesse. Did not know that. None of us knew that mm-hmm. because we're stupid, I yeah. guess. And then it, so it works the same way as Twitch, where you can gift people subs. Yeah, and yeah. I knew you could do that on Twitch. Yeah. I, I had no idea YouTube worked the same way. Yeah. yeah, and shout out to whoever at YouTube stole that idea, <laughs> set their phone to steal, because uh, he gifted five, and everyone took it upon themselves to be like, well, we're also going to do that. By the end of the night, I guess because everyone was in such a good mood because the Leafs were up 8-1 at second intermission. 595 memberships had been gifted. And on top of that, we had made it up to over 1,200 recurring memberships. So these 595 memberships are, hey, we, they're, they're free for you if you were gifted them. <laughs> um, do whatever you want. You can listen to... As many episodes as we upload over the month that you have the uh, subscription, um, we want to get you signed up for the year, but we got to earn that, obviously. Mm-hmm. Got to earn that from you, and we're yep. aiming to. And uh, I just want to thank everyone from that stream for making me cry because I cried on the stream. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I like watching those videos of random people on Twitch streaming. And then someone's like, here's $10,000. And then they start oh. to cry mm-hmm. or whatever. And I was like, I'm in one of those videos. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is happening to me right now. I'm in this. <laughs> and my team is winning 8-1. I love it. I love it. That worked for you? It, uh, yeah. No, it worked for me. And, and like you said, it's uh, extremely important to our business. It is. And, you know, I'm looking at the uh, the VIPs. The, the comment section of the VIP videos just on YouTube alone are, are just worth the price of admission. Well, it's a rowdy group of, of people. They're rowdy. And I ask them, I go, if you know who subs- uh, who gifted you your subscription, please give them a shout out in the comment section. Oh, But, but yeah. then <laughs> the, I guess when, when you're gifted it, it doesn't tell you except in the live chat. Oh. And if you don't... If, if you miss it, you miss it. So people are like scrambling through the chat. Like, I'm, I'm, I want to say thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't, <laughs> I'm not ungrateful. Um, it's fucking ridiculous. Very cool. Just a, a ridiculously silly, fun stream where uh, we got lots of memberships and also our team kicked ass. That's right. Now, still waiting on the Riley suspension news as of this recording. Doesn't mean that it won't come out. Sometime today doesn't that's, mean it won't come out later this show. That's so ridiculous. Uh, Leafs are like, four and zero oh since he's been suspended. Uh, as the boys have said, they were rallying around Mo, and this is the problem with NHL suspensions. And the PA really needs to stop this uh, in the next CBA. If you appeal a suspension, you shouldn't have to serve the suspension. But the NHL makes you serve the suspension. You get your money back, mm-hmm. but you never get to play the game. Well, okay, no, no, do it this way. And act like an adult. You've had over a week. Do it this way. You've had over a week. Be an adult. Be a league. Wait, like, what? be an adult about what? Like, okay, so it's five games, okay. right? Yeah. Every adult in this room hmm, mm-hmm. is like, okay, well, we have over a week to make this decision. No, the appeal was on Friday. Okay, so it was on Friday. They've played two games. Yeah. Since then, you know what I mean. So like, if it's been, I don't think three days. any. I don't think any reasonable. Okay, whatever. Like, th- still, mm. like, I don't think any reasonable f- Leaf fan, especially, w- thought this appeal was going to result in the suspension going down to three games or less. Right. But you have the appeal Friday. Mm-hmm. There's a game Saturday. There's a game Monday as well. Fucking giddy up. Yeah. The only thing on that is that it's there's the the two outdoor games on Saturday, Sunday. It's a Memorial Day Monday. Like it's it's reasonable that because Gary Batman has to like fu- there's paperwork involved here. Like there's a big report. CJ was talking about on the Chris Johnson show that came out this morning. There's a big report that the Gary Batman files along with this to, mm-hmm. for his reasoning for that. And it's it takes a little bit of time, and it's not it's not up to him to act on the schedule of the Leafs. Okay, how I'm about just this to then? Provide some no, no, for I the agree. Way the NHL is run. The commissioner is extraordinarily busy. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's unreasonable to expect the commissioner on such a busy weekend to come up with a uh, result in this appeal. Uh, is it? No, no, just no, say no, yes or no, no, no. I just think say it's yes unreasonable. Or no, Gary. It's, it's unreasonable. Yes or no question. It's unreasonable. Yes, we reduce or no, we don't. It's unreasonable. He's the commissioner. He's in charge of everything. 
How about this? It's unreasonable for the commissioner to make the decision here at all. Yeah, well, that, why that, do I give a, a shit what Gary Bettman thinks about a, a hit? A completely different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. But like, this is why I keep there's saying a, it's not a league. There's a flaw in the system. And, yeah. and the flaw is that... How are we still we're, sitting we're here on not, Tuesday? We don't know. We're also like he could make a decision today, and Morgan Riley could play tomorrow. Like we haven't even crossed the barrier to where it's five games. I'm just, so could, it's like, what are the complaints that you know? oh he didn't get done in five games? It hasn't five games haven't happened yet. Well, I think Mark the, Zuckerberg could watch the next stream, and then we'll be up to fifty thousand memberships a month. The, co- the sure. I don't know. The complaint I think is that we've seen this happen before, and like I remember with Dennis Weidman hitting the referee. As much as that event was, it was quite controversial at the time. It uh, still is. Still yeah. is controversial. Dennis mm-hmm. claims that he didn't mean to. The, you know, everybody else seems to think he did. That ref has games, never worked again. Has ne- that ref's never worked again. Dennis, I don't think, played in the league again. Uh, if it did, was, it was he, like one more year. He did for a brief time. The Calgary Flames were very obviously screwed by whistles for yeah. the next year. Overly penalized. And we just... Never addressed but, that. But my it point, just sort of went away. But my point with that, Steve, is that he had that suspension reduced, and he'd already served all the games. Mm-hmm. Like, and that, that's that's that is this is the point. So it's not Morgan Riley so much as that. It's a, I think what no. ML, the MLB does is fair. You appeal your suspension. You keep playing until the appeal process no, goes. It's through. got nothing to do with the Leafs. Yeah, nothing to do with. Well, the Leafs. it's hold just, on. <laughs> it always has something to do with the yeah, league. I think those are two different conversations. I think this in particular right now, if we're talking about the Morgan Riley suspension, there's a lot of reasons to why it hasn't happened yet, and there's still time to, for it to get done in time for four games. The idea of the NHL system is set up in the worst way possible is correct in something that's yeah. a completely different conversation. Yeah. yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, but it's it's related. Like, we're still sitting here. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's silly. Well... We'll we'll see because we got a ten o'clock start tomorrow, which means ten forty five start tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not going to complain about it. The Leafs are four and zero oh since the, the Riley budget four games. Just as someone who makes YouTube, yeah, Maddie just said you. <laughs> as someone who makes YouTube videos after the games, was that? We have a show on Wednesday as well, so I just feel bad for you. <laughs> yeah, don't. That's no, good. yeah, the Friday don't. show is the bad one. Don't, no, the Friday don't. show's the, Friday the bad he's, one. Maddie, we, we've, he's been complaining about this for years, yeah. okay? Guy works in the candy shop. Listen, oh, he's got to lose a little I, sleep. I just like everybody getting their rest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Also, but <laughs> Maddie sits here. Steve, what Maddie sits do? here next show. What did you do last fall? Uh, uh, got bullied by my friends uh, three days a week. You <laughs> moved so close to Toronto. So yeah. like, it's not even a big deal that you have you to move stay up. Oh. 40 cities closer to Toronto. There's only 40 Dude. between here and your house. If you moved I so lived, close. If I still lived in Oshawa. Uh, okay. I know. Yeah, thank God you live so close in Ajax. I live much closer. I'm just saying I yeah. like it very much. It's always great to get halfway to the cottage and be home. Yeah. <laughs> How about it's always great to have a cottage, you billionaire Scrooge McFuck? Adam, I like that uh, Matthew Nyes bought out all of uh, Mullet Arena for the game on. Yes. Like yeah. An entire section, which that is 50 is to funny. 60 seats. So so the math is like 4% of the building will be Matthew Nyes relatives. And that's no. incredible. No, it's not. <laughs> no, that's let's, not the let's math. Let's do the math. Let's do right, the math. All right. So let's hold on. Okay. Math. There's actually. 3,500 seats. Anybody that tells you that there's more than that, I think is... Isn't it 49? I need to no, know. Because no, because remember they did the renovations? And no, then there was, it was going to reduce When they capacity? report there... Oh, let's, let's, let's get the information. I need to know. Mullet, Adam, yeah. buy the building. Sell your cottage and buy the building. <laughs> capacity. Seating capacity. Uh, 5,000. Okay. That's what they claim. NHL, NHL hockey, 4,600. 4,600. Yeah. 4,600. And then Times how many? 100 divided by 60. Equals. I'm almost positive you're doing it wrong. All right. Isn't it? Don't you do? No, you would do 60 divided by the total number of the building. Yeah, or you do times 100 divided by. No. It's too, it's your, okay. Yeah. I just, I you're, just, you're muddy in the water. Okay. Adam and I came up with the idea. I just did in grade 11 math. Is that what you got? I did 100 divided by uh, 4,600. Where are you getting 100. A hundred, a hundred friends and family. Here, here, here He's go. doing fifty to sixty. Oh, fifty 50. to sixty. Oh, my bad. But sixty divided by forty six hundred. Yeah. So it's yeah. No, it's uh, one percent. One point one point three percent of the building. That's what I got. Yeah. It's and not. It's not four percent. 
a little high. 1.3% of the building is still Dude, that is significant. <laughs> <laughs> like a 200-pound person having two pounds of wing? Yeah, that's a lot. It's your 1% wing? That's a, There you go. That's that's what Mullet Arena that's me. is. <laughs> yeah. Um, what if you combined Matthews' family and Nye's family? Then we get into like 100? Well, I wonder if Matthews' family is <laughs> even like... Too, are they like, ah, yeah. It's, <laughs> we've seen this. We've seen this movie. It's 50 goals, though. Yeah, like you get to watch goals it against oh. the Coyotes. Yeah, I didn't even. Think uh, of yeah, that's why he didn't score again on Monday. Yeah, because he's like, I want to leave fifty for Arizona. He hit the post just to let him know. Yeah, just to let him know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fuse is coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fuse. Look out for the fuse. <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's a bet I'm going to be taking pregame. I oh think so. God. Matthews, anytime. I right. think so. That's a bet MGM. Absolutely. Um, I want to. Uh, I don't think that's the name of the. Segment. It's the name of the segment. Actually, we're not doing that segment today, so you don't have to worry. Oh, we're not? No. Oh, okay. Uh, Now, here's what I want to say about Toronto and St. Louis. The first thing is, Radko Gudis was playing in this game. That was Anaheim. And the... Sorry. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) Toronto-Anaheim. The first thing you want to say about Toronto-Anaheim is that Radko Gudis is playing in this game. Yes. And you want to... Like, I was wondering, you know, the picture of him celebrating the goal with, you know, against Joseph Wall in the playoffs and that sort of thing... I've always wondered in NHL terms, does the player carry that or does the team carry that? And what I mean by that is the way that Good has played is a lot of the way that the Florida Panthers played, which was reckless and crazy. And um, it's okay. We're going to give 19-year-olds concussions and no one's going to have to pay the piper for it. It's no, no big deal. No. But it Sickly. seemed like this <laughs> followed Gudis to the Ducks. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like the Leafs were after him. Okay. Um I'm going to... Yes, I've taken off my sweater since the last time the look camera the, was on. Look at that tat. Look at, look it's at all that. tatted up. Um, here's the thing. All right. The Panthers wronged us. Let's kick their ass. Here's the problem. I don't, I don't, I don't think the Leafs can do that. <laughs> I don't yeah. Think they, but, I, I don't think but they can do that. Whose ass can they kick? Rad Gugudis. Because he's the and, only one. Okay. Listen. There's been a lot said about the code. Riff, riff, riff. A lot said about the code. This year, can I tell you the meekest puppy dog move I've seen maybe in the NHL this year? Give it to us. Simone Benoit blowing up Max Jones. And then having to fight Delorier for it? Nope. Wrong hit. You're, th- that was the Flyers game. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Because yeah. the Flyers are a team. Okay. Delorier, former duck, yes. by the way. D- we all know how Delorier would have reacted to it. Uh, so Benoit blew up someone on the flyers. I forget who, and he had to fight Nick Delorier. Mm. Benoit then blows up Max Jones of the ducks in a blowout where the ducks are getting humiliated. They go over to Benoit. Ryan Reeves is on the ice. He says, no, no, no. You will not be touching Simone Benoit. Ross Johnston comes over. Oh. And they just have a chat. You're never playing again. I'm the coach. I'm sending you to Madagascar. Is that Reeves I'm talking about or Ross Johnson? Ross Johnson. I'm sending you to the moon. I'm sending you to... can Can you send a player down to the SPHL? I'm not sure. What? Dude, there's like six of you in the league. What do I have you for? I think they were worried about an instigator. Because those have worried been called. about an instigator? You You're wouldn't want to take... seven goals! You wouldn't want to take Ross Johnston off the ice. He brings so much on oh the ice. Oh, my God. Like, dude, <laughs> what are you there for? What are you there for? If you're a team that has any sort of pride at all, there's got to be an answer there. And don't look at me sideways like this is the first hockey game you've ever watched. This is how it's always worked. And I tell you what, a lot of Lee fans have not seen the value in Ryan Reeves. That's the value of Ryan Reeves. That's the value right there. Dude, that's crazy. He has been playing well, by the way. That's, uh, oh, yeah. No, no. I thought he's played well. He took a penalty, caused a goal yesterday, but I don't know. It's mm-hmm. going to happen. Uh, that's crazy that in a blowout, someone rocks one of your guys and nothing happens. You stink. Now, oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's, it's funny to hear you talk about both sides of Ryan Reeves. Like, if this conversation was last week, it's like, get him, that guy off the team. 
Uh, and this week, it's let's. Uh, this is the value of him. No, 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 no. Like, listen, you don't. Very hot and cold. A hundred percent, hundred percent. I agree. It's just like this room. Holy shit. Um, but you don't always see the value of Ryan Reeves. Um, we've seen it recently, man. We've seen it recently. Are you going to remember this the next time he has a turnover? I will do my best. And he's useless on the ice because Honestly, he didn't it, fight anybody. Dude, it's something. pretty rare. You know? Like, it's pretty rare. No, it's not. Is turnovers? I would say he's he's not a weapon, like, offensively. Certainly not. <laughs> Certainly uh, not. Like I, I don't th- I don't think he's very useful in the defensive end either. Because mm, his speed's not there well, to keep up with most of the play. No, whenever he's in the Leafs' defensive zone and so is the puck, I, f- I feel it hurts my feelings. Yeah. Um, and I think <laughs> there's a reason he was scratched for nearly a month. Yes. And when we have these conversations, it's weird to ignore the month where he was not no, a no. part of the team. No, no. You don't ignore it. Yeah. You just say, gosh, he's been playing for two weeks and looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. He's looked I pretty don't, good I, don't, I honestly don't think with the, the emergence of McMahon that there's a place on this team for him when everybody's healthy. Well, when well, Yarncroke's back, I don't think so. Yeah. I what, think you're right on that. Yarncroke, yeah. What? <sighs> like, are you going to scratch McMahon? No. <laughs> that, Mc, I t- okay. Guess, like, he's been great. Yeah. Guess, guess who I think Sheldon's going to scratch instead. Guess. Robertson? No. Yep. Yeah. No. It's all, it always kind of feels no, like No. You can't. I don't think he should. You cannot scratch all, him. But it feels like Sheldon always wants to lean towards getting Robertson out. I mean, come on, Sheldon. I'm not, I'm not going to look too much into Gregor getting scratched because a lot of guys were game time decisions. Were you like over the moon? No. No, I was not. <laughs> no, I was not. Were you like, my he's, dreams have finally come true? Either. No, he's had a good last few games, but a lot of guys were game time decisions and he might be injured or sick. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh-huh. However, he, you, I mean, I've been very open about he's not in my optimal Leafs lineup. He's no. not. Hey, this episode is sponsored in part by BetterHelp. And let me tell you, uh, it is, uh, it's the depths of winter. Mm-hmm. And it might be a sunny day outside here in Toronto, but there was, I think there was a, uh, from the start of winter here to midway through January, there were 30 hours of sunlight. Wow. What? 30 what? hours of sunlight in Toronto. Are you counting yourself? I, yeah. Well, I'm sunshiny every time I walk into the room. Oh. And that's because, <laughs> that's because I've had therapy. Lots and lots of therapy. And BetterHelp is a great way to do that. You can be matched with somebody in like 24 to 48 hours. If you don't vibe with them, that's totally fine. Because you got to have chemistry with therapy. I have actually, in the past, had to switch therapists um, uh, because I was we just weren't clicking. And the next person I switched to was absolutely perfect you and sometimes it takes a couple yeah. yeah there's nothing it's not it's not it's not uh it's not personal it's just something you got to do the other thing that i think was is great with better help is a you get it done quick b you can do it in a mode that works for you when you know traditional therapy used to be you had to go into the office back in the 70s they all laid on couches i never went to a therapist's office that had that nice couch to lay on uh no so i was very disappointed the first time i went i was like where's my couch but what about this <laughs> laying on your own couch doing it over the phone doing it on video chat, doing it on just text chat. You can do it any way you want through BetterHelp. And uh, we want you to sign up and get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com slash SDP. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. Jesse, Steve, what Mm. would you say about liquid IV? It tastes magical and wonderful. And it's great for on, on some days where I just don't even feel all that good. Like I'm not sick. Or tired or whatever. You just I, feeling black. I just feel bleh. Throw a little liquid IV in there. Put it put it in the in a little bit of water. Stir it up. I like to pour a little bit in, drink some, add more water, add a little bit more liquid IV because it makes me feel like a scientist, and then I feel better. Jesse, in no time. <laughs> we were gonna ask you how you felt about it, but we don't have time. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> I use it more for recovery because it's rapid hydration. I like to use it after I exercise. Like that's that's where I find it the best. And the lemon lime f- flavor is my favorite. It is a uh, <laughs> three times the electrolytes of your leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients. Non sugar free product only. Liquid IV hydrates faster than water alone. It's all in one stick. Uh, no GMO and free from any gluten, dairy, or soy uh, for daily use before workout. When you feel run down, when you're feeling blah. 
or maybe after a long night out or a long flight. I know uh, Tim Haraney just flew to Bahrain, and one of the things he took with? Liquid. Hey, there you go. Very smart. Uh, weekends are for going wild. Monday is for Liquid IV. <laughs> Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code DANGLE. That's spelled D-A-N-G-L-E. That's DANGLE at liquidiv.com. 20% off your first order when you shop Superior Hydration today. Promo code DANGLE. Liquidiv.com. Great job, buddy. Um, I want to say this, okay? I think this is important. I wanted to get back to Radko Gudas for a second. Oh. Because we got just completely off track. No, no. Now, no, no. I forget which one of the uh, of the nine goals that the Leafs hung on him. Uh, five. He was on the ice for five. Five of against. them. Um, there was a goal that was scored, and I believe it was Bobby McMahon. It for, was the the one at the end of the second, uh, so the Bobby McMahon goal. Bobby McMahon from Max Domi. about the cross check. Yeah, so yeah. so so uh Gudis slashes him and then cross checks him or one of the others. Five games. What I loved about that. That's a joke. What I loved about what Max Domi brought, and I've been a Max Domi stand since he's been here. Yes, you have. I have been all the way on Max Domi. Is Max Domi he goes from celebration phase to <laughs> and he that just really good. freaks the and he goes what I love about him. Is he doesn't just grab Gudis. No, nope. he's going in fists. Yep. The, you know that you know that the Steve always talks about like the 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 fist cloud from the Looney Tunes where they're oh. all just fighting and there's like a, he goes in confetti and he's the only one in it. Yeah, he's the only one in the cloud and then he's like yep. Gudis, you're coming in the cloud now yep. with me. And and what I loved about it is Gudis is the tough guy who can actually play hockey for the yeah. Ducks. The, we know the, what Ross Johnson's there for. That's okay. The pigeons there's a from role. Animaniacs. Yeah, the, who are the good fellas? That's it. And he goes, I'm going right after you. Mm -hmm. You're not fucking doing this. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And because it's it, because that is the response mm -hmm. that this team has needed for such a long time. Chicken shit teams with chicken shit players. And by the way, chicken shit players get paid a lot of money. Look at Radko Gudis. He's great. I'd love him on the Leafs. I would absolutely love, love that chicken player. shit on the Leafs where he would be a man of integrity. Exactly. <laughs> And it was the right thing to do. <laughs> and it was the right salute, Gudis. Uh, oh, I'd have a jersey, number, <laughs> number three on the back or seven or whatever he wears. But the point is, <laughs> the point is that I think, um, I think Matt Stomy going right at him there really does send a message. Because even blowout too, even on goal number eight, yeah, you're still gonna have somebody if you're gonna if you're gonna take you know the the Leafs of the past, which was, and I understand the ethos from the time it was, oh, we'll take the slashes and the cross checks and whatever. We'll get a few bruises, but we're gonna have some power plays thrown yeah, our way. Does not come back to you. Doesn't come back to you ever. So now you got to do something about it. Max Domi does that. Maddie, if you want to bring this up, this is the McMahon goal. So uh, Jess, you're not plugged in. oh shit, really? Way to not be plugged in. Idiot. <laughs> Idiot. The Ross Johnston of today's show. No, I'm kidding. Cable came loose. I think I kicked it loose. Oh, you kicked it loose? There you go. Okay, so there this is go. after the goal score. It's, uh, there's the goal. There's the pass from Domi. Mm -hmm. This was, there's I did not goal. make a big enough deal of that pass in the video. Holy Great pass. shit. Fabulous pass. <laughs> Goal being scored. McMahon's on one knee. Beautiful, beautiful goal. He does a little spin around. Gudis still hasn't cross-checked him. The puck's in. Everybody's celebrating. Gudis comes over. Still comes next to him. In the head. Cross-checks him right in the by the yeah. numbers. Yeah. Right in the right in the back of the numbers. Uh, after the goal, we see that he gets spun around. Gudis is standing there, and then you watch Domi come around from the side here. So Gudis is standing there, and then Domi here comes, comes the cloud. right up top there by the Sportsnet logo. Domi's skating in. Here comes the cloud. He comes right yeah. over to Gudis. The ref's like, I'm getting out of the way. Yeah. That's it. Domi <laughs> right there. Big ol' shove in the face. <laughs> I'm Max Domi, and I'm not taking this. Yeah, a great, great little, great little sequence. He's the Animaniacs there. pigeon. That's yeah. it, right there. <laughs> yeah. No, and like you know, we're calling it a cross check. It is a cross check. Is it comparable to Riley's? No, it is not. No, oh, not at all. Not even in the. What slightest. are we even bringing that up for? No, absolutely. Because people saying that you no, have to wasn't. qualify everything with no, the Riley. No, I don't think you do on that. I like if you're if you're a salty Leafs fan, like this is a good like feather in your cap to be like, look. He yeah. cross-checked him after Ooh. he scored a goal, yeah, yeah. but oh. it's not the same. <laughs> oh, like, no, it's the the week since the Riley thing has been free. Nine days. Like you Nine don't, whole days. You don't need to worry about anyone liking you because they, <laughs> they don't. don't. They don't. <laughs> yeah. And it's freeing knowing no one likes you. You can just be a dickhead. But Leaf fans, there's so many of us that there's enough to like each other. 
Yeah. You know? And hate each other. And hate each other, yeah. for sure. And Steve, this was kind of fuel for when when we were talking about the whole Riley thing going back, there's people who were like pretending they've never seen this in hockey Man, ever. That's nuts. Like this game that I love. What's happened to my Morgan th- Riley has soiled it. It's so Those, violent. It's like you watch one other hockey game ever in your life, you'll see shit like Dude, this. it was complete dishonesty. <laughs> it was I know, complete but dishonesty. to be to be honest with you though, like Sens fans have, like I told you, have not had anything to hang their caps on. So I understand it. The the Sens media is a little bit like, like it's almost like a Shakespeare sonnet sometimes. How how freaking dramatic they've been. It's been crazy. I I <laughs> and listen in Toronto, what you're gonna get because the media contingent here is so big, you're gonna get the people that are like rah rah rah, and then they're gonna get people that are, actually this is wrong, and here's what the numbers say. That's usually what the two camps are. Mm-hmm. Uh, in it, with the Senators, it's a different sort of thing. It's like everybody united and like we all hate. Guy who has so many Lady Bing votes. <laughs> like, well, I mean, listen, like, you did like, a shithead thing that you can do. Yeah. I get it. I, like, yeah. Do we need to qualify that? I think yes, we had an entire yes. week last week. Oh, wait. Week no, you're right. Dedicated to that. No, you're right. I'm not My qualifying bad. that anymore. Duh. Um, but it was nice to see Max Domi get in there and yeah. and and go right after Gudis. And I know there was some stuff beforehand, but to me, that was the biggest message sent with the Leafs. And I, I we need that kind of response. Now, uh, obviously, um, Bobby McMahon had the weekend of his life. Go ahead. No, no, sorry. I just I the I just want to put a, a button on that, please. Because sometimes I sit here, mm-hmm. and you know, I sometimes I'll read comments that like our takes on this sort of thing on like the max domi thing and sticking up in the code and burr that it our takes have gotten older as we've gotten older that's not true that's not what's happened what's happened is we sat here for 10 years saying turn the other cheek the league needs to change its ways and we watched that not happen like not even a smidgen of progress yeah for a decade and so we i guess you got to deal the rules that you're played right yeah you, we stopped like uh what insanity the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result so we stopped going yeah i want some underappreciated five foot nine goal score from the minors to be on the on the fourth line like i stopped wishing for that and instead was like, what if you had someone who kicked a little bit of ass? Well, and you know who moved off of that strategy first? Kyle Dubas. He did. And he that did. was his theory. And it was a good one. Hey, if we draw a bunch of penalties, wouldn't it be great if we had crazy offensive firepower? We'd probably win every game. Mm-hmm. And and it was a like a spectacular theory. Mm-hmm. They tried it. Didn't work. Well, he tried And he started to- getting tougher guys. It's a it's a testament to how good the Lightning are. Well, besides the two cups, like Dubas tried to rebuild. He tried to build the Lightning. He did, and the Lightning are not a team that, um, like they're not the Panthers. The Panthers are the team who kick the ass. The Lightning get outplayed, rely on goaltending. That's yes. what they're. That was their whole thing. The Lightning. Well, year. and now they don't even really get outplayed. No. This this uh, or the the Lightning were the team that could take the beating. And had enough skill that you are not, your toughness is not, listen, we're going to fucking beat you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're strong enough to take your ass kicking and we're skilled enough that you can't touch us. But the Leafs didn't have what, where Dubas, Dubas is fatal flaws. He didn't have a top scoring player. Who's a complete psychopath. Right. Like, please don't underestimate what Nikita Kucherov will do to you if you piss him off. <laughs> the, the core four combined do not have as much aggression as right. Nikita Kucherov. No, has. of course not. But they that's what he tried to build. And Brad Treleving came in and goes, okay, well, you know what's easier to find than all that? Is I'm just going to get a bunch of dudes you who get will some tougher guys. confetti gloves. Yeah. Sorry. So... So I think what was interesting now is is I thought going into yesterday's game, um, obviously, you know, Bobby McMahon's having the weekend of his life. We came so close to double hat tricks from Matthews and McMahon oh, on consecutive I wanted nights. I wanted it. Oh, it was almost, it was so close. And even Nick Robertson's last goal was assisted by Bobby McMahon oh against God. Anaheim. Yeah. The, the, the Bobby McMahon's goals, like they're not bad goals either they are they're, they're good goals miss, what are they're legit say? nhl that dude looks like he can score in this league goals like what they're I, they're good goals what did i say about this guy 
Like no, you're right. He he's got the raw mm-hmm. tools, and like the fact he has two empty netters is significant too. Because every the, both times he was sent out, I'm like Bobby McMahon. Like so, he's trusted in those situations. That's yeah. crazy. He's out there in the last two minutes is a big deal. And it's crazy now that he's like scoring this ridiculous uh, pace the, over the last couple of days. A lot of stories are coming out about like his his come up and everything, and everyone's talking about how at every single level he's always been scoring. Mm-hmm. It's just he's never gotten really the NHL opportunity to to play in this kind of role in a scoring role. But like he's been scoring like crazy this season in the AHL and through his junior career. That's what he was known for for being a great goal scorer and. It's great to see that it's translated. It's funny because so many players are like that. So many players come up through junior, and the reason they got to come up through junior is because they scored like crazy. But then they go to the NHL. Kiprios talked about that when he was on the show College. years ago. College. Yep. Uh, okay, well, what you know what I'm talking about. Sorry, yeah. No, generally, I, I, said, I said junior, but yeah, he played in the NCAA. Generally, oh, Americans call, get pissed. Yes. No, no, no pissed. That, um, We should get that right. He's the, uh, he, he, went, he played in the NCAA. Wade Belak was a big-time goal scorer in, in the minors, and he came up to the NHL and was like, oh, I can't score goals here. That's, uh, so I'm going to fight people. Was a 12th overall pick? Yeah, Nick Kiprio, same thing. Oh, I can't score goals here. I'm going to have to do other things. Uh, Bobby McMahon had 21 goals for the Marlies last year in 30 games. Yeah, man. In 30 games? In 30 games. Dude, he was so good. How many assists did he have, though? Because that's really what matters. Seven. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Matthews season right there. Yeah. Um, and But and then we think about he, how he's a rookie and his development and all that stuff, and you like think, oh, Bobby McMahon's older than Austin Matthews? What? How old do you think Bobby McMahon is? <laughs> 27. Wow! Yeah, and Matthews isn't even twenty-seven. No, no. <laughs> so you're like, okay, oh this God. also isn't a rookie. Yeah, <laughs> this is who this is. Yeah, <laughs> this is I don't even guy. think he's eligible for the Calder. Mm, I don't At twenty-seven? No. What's the, the what's cutoff? Twenty-six. Twenty-six, but that or twenty-four? I forget what Panarin it, wanted. That. Panarin was, was twenty-four, 24 but it's older than that. I mm-hmm. think it's twenty-five or twenty-six, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter though. I I, I want to say this. I want to say this. So Bobby Man has scored now in three straight games. He has eight goals. He is closing in on Matthew Nyes and Callie Yarncroke as the only non-core guys <laughs> on the forward group who have 10 goals. Love it. Callie Yarncroke scored his last goal at the beginning of January, and he's been sitting out ever since because he was injured. Mm-hmm. And um, went nine straight games without a point before getting injured. Nyes scored in period in t- 20 seconds into the second period yesterday after the worst first period I think I've ever seen ever Dude. from oh. two NHL teams. It was the worst. Six and six of the shots? Are you very kidding me? They all look like uh, they're like, oh, it's lunchtime. Yeah. They forgot they had a game, you know? <laughs> like, it was terrible I've hockey. never seen the Leafs be so thoroughly, or it's rare to see the Leafs be so thoroughly a team's kryptonite. The Blues are not a bad team. But they sure play like it <laughs> against, against the, the Leafs. Leafs. Yeah, yeah. Holy the shit. two games we saw. Yeah, yeah, they play terrible. They they didn't even hit forty shots mm-hmm. in um, consecutive like together, like back to back games, like combined. Yeah, well, they had what did they have? They've been terrible. They had like fifteen or sixteen it against the Leafs the other night. Fifteen and twenty one. It's brutal. And one of them was a home game against like the Leafs are legit using their like eleventh or twelfth defenseman. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, I, and I want to talk about him in a second, but. Um, Matthew Nyes' goal is a huge deal. Great goal, too. If you're, a, if you're a non-Leafs fan, you probably have maybe heard us talk about the fact that there has been zero depth scoring. Mm-hmm. This team would be a lot further along if there was some depth scoring. Mm-hmm. So having Matthew Nyes reach 10 is a big deal. Having McMahon at 8 is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Getting Kelly Yarncroke back hopefully soon? Question mark. I, a lot of people forgot it even existed. Yeah, it looks like know. it's going to be a little bit longer, I think, the last time, the last update they gave. Well, what's the rush? Yeah. You know, the same same with Joseph Wall. Like both, of, I think both yeah. of those injuries, they're like, you know, it's gonna take a little bit more time. If I think if the ship was sinking, you maybe push them along a little mm-hmm. bit, but it's it's not. If this is game five against the Boston Bruins, they're probably finding a way to get in there. No one's even out of the lineup. No. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. no. Um. Yeah. So uh, the 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 thing that I think that we are sort of burying the lead here is Austin Matthews scored his forty ninth goal of the season um, in the era adjusted scoring seasons in NHL history like the the top era adjusted NHLs that the the best season for goal scoring was who Brett Hall Brett Hall in 1991 I think he had 80 something goals or something like he's like 86 so I did an article on this a few years ago um, and it's it's difficult to follow but what era adjusted means, if you don't know, is they basically look at 
how many goals are scored per game league wide. Um, and then they look at your goal total. So when Gretzky scored 92, it was 92 goals, but because it was a higher scoring era, era, um, it goes down significantly um, because 92 goals were not worth as much as they would be today. 92 goals today would be you, you like you got to piss test them every day. Like he's definitely on steroids. Yeah, or yeah. Something, right. Um, but Brett Hall has the best era adjusted goal scoring season ever. And if I'm not mistaken, it was actually Hall's second best actual goal scoring season. Wow. Yes. Now adjusted for era. Um, Cause again, what matters about this is that Austin has to do it. Like he has 49 and 53, which is a crazy number. That's so it's a crazy number. When, when Jonas Siegel puts out his article for the athletic, they're, they're saying, here's what he could do if he keeps up this pace. But I think it's really important that we understand that it's not done till it's done. Right. Uh, and so the next one is Alexander Ovechkin from 07, 08. Uh, and then the next one is Lemieux from 88, 89. Maddie, do you want to bring up Steve's article? I feel like we do this every like six months. You know, I just, oh, yeah, up, you're I bring up this Steve's old article from Sportsnet. Hold on, Look at me. those graphics. Still up. There he is. Wow. The it's blog. still up. Yeah, we do. We did this like uh, I don't know earlier the fall. Did we? Yeah, yeah. We I do this every remember. once in a while. Still um, crazy. There's the chart. Jonas Siegel just stole Steve's work from years. Ago. Wow, you, you son believe, of a gun! Can you believe Jonas would do that? Yeah, like, Jonas. Yeah. So see what I did there on the right. Um, I said uh, I wrote the difference between their actual goal total and their era adjusted total. So Brett Hall in 1991 had 86 goals. It adjusts down to 78. No one era adjusted has hit 80. Mm-hmm. Um, Ovechkin is uh, 65 goals, goes up to 70. What is Matthews's era adjust? If he hits 70 this season, what does it equal? It's 74. So, so if he hits 70 at 74, okay. Oh, sorry. If he hits 70? Yeah. I don't know, but they're just saying if he continues this pace, it will be equal to 74, and Brett Hall's would be equal to 78. Now, okay. the interesting thing about that, I'm I, I'm pretty sure, is depending on how goal scoring goes league-wide, yes. over the course of the rest of the season, it, his number could change no matter what he does. Yeah, right. I guess you can't determine that now because you have to see what the league equivalent is to his goals. Oh, and also, like goal scoring is typically high at the beginning of the season, goes down as the season goes as we go toward playoff rules. So goal scoring across the league is probably going to go down over the next two months. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a freaky little stat, but it, like, look at the names on this frigging list. And that's where Matthews belongs. Brett Hall, Alex Ovechkin, Mario Lemieux, Phil Esposito, Wayne Gretzky, Steven Stamkos, Pavel Bure, Gordie Howe. That's the class of goal scorer that he belongs in. It's One crazy. of the more interesting things, I think, about your chart is the 81-82 season from Gretzky, where he scored 92 goals, and it's era adjusted to 68. Because there was because a of shit how load many of goals, goals that scored year. scored in the 80s. If I'm That's not, crazy. If I'm not mistaken, that was the year Dennis Maruk hit 60 as well. I think the NHL had three 60 goal scorers that year. Because remember, that was the whole thing with his book. He's mm-hmm. the forgotten 60 goal yes. scorer. Because, because it was common that year. <laughs> yeah, he was like the third guy down. Yeah. Which is, that sort of happened with Pasta. Like, didn't David Pasternak hit over 60 goals last year? And no one cares because he finished second <laughs> in goal scoring. Yeah, Pasta McDavid. always has like a crazy point total and he goes so underrated because. Yeah. Yeah. He's also, yeah, he's a criminally underrated player, but he also finished second. Right, you know what I mean. the the fifth the sixty five is kind of the number everybody's aiming for right now for Matthews to get. Yeah, last year Pasternak had uh, sixty one goals. Yeah, and went very under sixty. But that that sixty five is kind of the the post lockout record that everybody's kind of looking at mm-hmm. Matthews to eclipse this year. Wow, I think this will be fun. He's gonna do it. I think it'll be fun. Um, scoring like it yeah if he does score uh, tomorrow in Arizona that will be his 50th goal in 54 games I'll take it yeah pretty cool Um, another interesting thing that I had completely forgot about and Rink Rat Report put this up uh, Simon Benoit Bobby McMahon and Ilya Samsonov have all cleared waivers this year Uh, and adding to that adding to that so has Martin Jones oh my god and all of those players 
Where would the Leafs be without them? Oh my God, so boned. Simo Benoit. <laughs> so screwed. Simo Benoit especially, but obviously Bobby McMahon over the last week has been it's make madness is oh, what it is. I mean, goaltending can't be underrated here. But no, let's start with Benoit. Sure. The hits that he is laying, oh, the yeah. confidence he displays. Oh, yeah. This is a guy that it's like this team, when they signed him, I can't think that they expected him more to be more than like a 6-7. Uh, like he's playing... The things he's doing is exactly what I expected mm -hmm. based on what I learned about him in my research before making the video. Let's be honest. None of us knew who this freaking guy was. Like, even yeah. though he played 74 games in the NHL last year, it was on the Ducks. Right. He, his counting numbers, his possession numbers were freaking awful. A lot of his counting numbers, like he led the Ducks in so many categories. And I feel like that has value because even though you're on a team that stinks they stunk they were really bad he was doing the friggin most he was blocking more than his peers he was hitting more than his peers it has value i didn't think he'd be an everyday player on a team with aspirations of making the playoffs and and injuries have played into that but they've given him the opportunity oh, yeah. he seized it and that's pro sports what i find interesting is that all Anaheim would have had to do to keep him is qualify. Qualify him. They wouldn't even qualify him. It sounds like both him and Gregor would have stayed in Anaheim and San Jose if they had just been qualified. And they weren't I think even qualified. They were, I think they were both surprised not to be. And I'm, you know, I, I'm looking at what Radko Gudis brings, and he's great. He's a great player, a great person for the for the amount of money. But the value you're getting with a Simon Benoit. And imagine the two of them together on the. Dollar. I was gonna say, imagine those two as a pair. Like, uh, what would it have cost you? Nine hundred, a million dollars, something like that. If you're an RFA, probably less than a mil. And that would have been a hell of a pair. Nobody would have wanted to play those two. Well, and like, forget qualifying him. You would have had the option of extending him at probably under a mil for more than one year. Yeah, <laughs> dude, like that's a, that's a fumble. Yeah, that's a and like, I don't I don't know if he's twenty five yet. He's twenty four. Man, young defenseman who can lay the body and and, yeah. and has no interest in offense. Well, and like like zero doesn't care, doesn't want it. Think of the past few years. Like in free agency, you've gone out and gotten Ryan Strom, gotten Alex Kalorn, gotten Radko Gudis. Like they don't want to be purely young. I mean, you want young pieces to build around, but like they're trying to surround these guys like with vets. You're, you're telling me he couldn't have fit like their window. For success, I think he would have. Dude, it's a fumble. It's a, well, I don't it's know a what, bad decision. I don't know what their window for success is anymore because Trevor Zegers is apparently on the trade block and he's twenty two. Well, like right. I just don't. So what? How are we how, rewinding the window even more? Like what do we do? Are we lining it up with Leo Carlson? Is that that's how, fine? How isn't uh, how isn't this player exactly what you're looking for? Yeah, cheap, uh, young asshole, <laughs> willing to do whatever. Like. He's great. Mm -hmm. He's so good. And I think 90% or 90%, 999 percent of hockey fans and 999999 percent of hockey agents and GMs couldn't have picked him out of a line six months ago. I couldn't. I couldn't have. That's great. It's an amazing story. Now, Martin Jones and Ilya Samsonov. I mean, obviously, Samsonov cleared because he was playing terribly and the the cap hit was so high. No one could have taken. The no hit. one could have taken the hit. But that's there's a benefit of the of the of the system where everybody's against the cap, so nobody can take anybody off of waivers. Well, and like now we're hearing trade rumors of like the Devils trying to get Jake Markstrom. Imagine if they just went yoink <laughs> and they grabbed Samson off. Well, then they would have had to try to get him back on track, and I think that's what they wanted to not do. With well, the other thing that blows my mind is Martin Jones. Being on the Leafs was like literally that was cemented by a one hundred thousand dollar bonus. How many teams would give a million dollars right now for competent goaltending? Oh, like, no. I, and no. and it was a hundred grand in training camp. They're like, no, that's that's crazy. We couldn't couldn't think of it, and well, that was enough. And like, you know, let's say he gets traded at the deadline or something, and he goes for like a. I don't know, a sixth round pick. Yeah. What is the financial value of a sixth round pick? Like a lot of you are going to roll your eyes like, oh, the, dude, the financial value. I, I know people have done charts of each draft pick. I promise you it's more than 100 grand. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent. That's a, uh, that's a good investment. And Bobby McMahon, another person that that unless you were really watching the Marlies when they signed him in, during the COVID year, you really 
You got to follow prospect people. You do. Ev everyone who covers the the Marlies in particular was really surprised that Bobby McMahon made it through. Well, I thought it was a mistake. Uh, and 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 Marshall Refi, uh, yeah. who played a lot of a lot of Marlies. People who are following the Marlies are saying uh, they're not surprised by the call up that he finally got it. He's Kevin Papetti's. Just he's his Papetti. He's his Papetti. <laughs> For sure, he <laughs> loves that guy. Uh, what did you guys think of him, Jesse, Steve? What would you think? He, I thought he was good. He played he, like what eleven minutes. He was good at. One thing they noted on the broadcast is like when you don't notice some guy in their first uh, game, it's a good thing. I, yes. I noticed him when he he came decently close to scoring a goal, mm -hmm. and he also tried to like obliterate a guy. He he didn't succeed. He, that was early on, right? Yeah, I yeah. can't remember who it was, but uh, no, he was just steady back there, and like. You got to credit um, the guys in the periphery of the Leafs front office because, like, there's still holdovers from the previous regime. Um, Marshall Refai is part of, like, the Dubas guys regime. He's And so is Bobby McMahon, honestly. They're free agent signings out of, like, college and the minors. Um, take a flyer on a guy. Take a flyer on a guy who earned an NHL deal. And they had a lot of those. Trevor Moore. Trevor Moore was one of those. Yeah. And now he's a multi-million dollar player in the NHL. They lost him. Justin Hall was that, too. Justin Hall was that. And mm -hmm. whatever you think the Seventh of him, defenseman in Detroit. Oh, uh, no, Jesse. It's a rotation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because you oh. rotate guys that make three and a half million dollars. Receipts. Receipts. When no, was no, the you, last you hold on. time Justin Hall got into a hockey game? Yeah. Uh, game log, Justin Hall this season. Oh, uh, January 31st. Jesus, really? No. Is he yeah. injured? He's got to be hurt. No. Uh, and I, he only got 13 minutes? I can do some <gasps> digging, but last time Man, we would have given him 13 minutes in the first period in Toronto. You listen, know, Adam's, listen. Adam's being facetious, but... No, I'm not. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to say this. I want to say this. Look at the wings. Justin Hall had game. value Holy to the shit. lineup. Where they played him in the lineup was always the problem. He brought value. That's, I mean, every year there's one of those. Yeah. There's at least one of them. And I'm glad that he and Keith have been separated. Yeah. Uh, although I I do wish Justin Hall the best because from all accounts, he's like one of the best guys in the league. Just a nice, he's a good, good, yeah, really good guy. He had the injury late November when he was like day to day. But then after that, he came back like a week later, oh. less than a week later. And no, this is just a healthy scratch. Look at that, though. W, 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 W. Oh, the wings w, have been great. W, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though, like, I, I praised Alex Lyon last show, and then the last, like, two games, he just got lit up. I think the point That's is say nothing. Never <laughs> compliment players ever. And never never point out when they've been shit, because they'll be great right after. Yeah. yeah. Um, never say anything. Man, yeah, how good have the Bruins and Panthers been? Man, <laughs> can we talk? Wait, let's go a deep dive on how man, great they are. How great have they been? Do you want to hear something that'll just bother you? you sure. Both always, of you. Mm -hmm. Always. It's my uh, sick. Guess who, who the leading candidates for Noah Hannafin are. Florida. Oh my the, god. The Panther. And right? number two? Uh the Boston Boston. Boston. Yeah. No. Now, now it's funny. I want to say something. Boston at trade deadlines, say go it. back and look at their history. Say it right there. Right Boston there. always gets it done at the trade deadline. They always go out and get the guy. Hampus Lindholm. And they're willing to pay for it. Hampus Lindholm, they paid a fortune for. Charlie and Coyle. people were like, Are you nuts? His advance numbers are terrible. He was playing for the Ducks. As we know, we can't count the no. Ducks' advance numbers. He was terrible. No, they weren't great. They weren't. Really? And, there, and there was injuries and there's other. Look at how great he's been in that system. Mm -hmm. Look how great he's been. Mm -hmm. If you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, backing up Jesse's point from last week, I know you got to say publicly that the first round pick, no, we're keeping that. We're keeping that. But if you have a chance to go out and get a player like that, you fire it. You drive that first round pick to the airport. All right? <laughs> you make it happen. Because that guy is, is you know, I, th I love Hampus Lindholm. I've always loved his game. He's a good player. Noah Hannafin is like exactly what they need at the exact age, and he could be that for like the next eight years. Underratedly, Noah Hannafin, A, in a role where he doesn't have as much responsibility because he's playing lower, and B, in a position where he's just allowed to carte blanche kick ass. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to think about him being on either of those friggin' teams. Noah Hannafin, uh, by the way, uh, CJ told uh, TSN Radio this morning that Noah Hannafin probably would be okay with re-signing in Toronto. Like that's always that's a question, right? Oh, if he were to get, he has a no-trade 
clause, and Toronto is probably not on it. So I in. I was list I was reading a couple of things this weekend. I heard I read the opposite in that if he goes to free agency, he wants to sign with an American team. Uh, CJ said this morning on first up on TSN that that's not necessarily true. Toronto would be would fit the parameters. Okay. Uh, Where else could you listen to CJ? Uh, on the CJ show. They got <laughs> uploaded this morning. Uh, by the way, I just want to throw this out there. NHL PR. Uh, Commissioner Gary Bettman. Oh. What do we think? Has he reduced it? No. Or has he confirmed Oh, you got the it? announcement? Yeah. Uh, I'd say he upholds the yeah. suspension. Yeah, confirm 5K. And you guys are right. Mm -hmm. He will not play in Arizona, but he will play against Vegas. There you go. Yeah. I mean, okay. What took so long, man? <laughs> like, I don't, I, yeah, that's what I expected, but like. I think as we outlined, it's it's very reasonable that he did it today. Yeah. It's unreasonable. Yesterday was a holiday. There was two outdoor games. It's bullshit, Jesse. The appeal happened Friday afternoon. It took him 72 hours. Like, it's, I think it makes sense. No. It, it didn't, it, it, it came down before the four games, so he could have played tomorrow. <laughs> this, there are so many times to rag on Batman. I don't think this is the one. No, it's why is he? Do, he's doing too much. Yes. Gary, yes. yes. Gary, I this worry. This not be his decision. Let Bill do it. Yeah. Yeah. What's Bill doing? Yeah. Making everyone miserable. <laughs> every time he steps in I front of a microphone. Every appeal should be to a third party. Isn't that the point of appealing? No, like, it's, it's about control. Oh, it's kind of stupid that he's the decision maker here. Well, the NHLPA has some things it could sort out if they only hired people that did stuff. It looks like they have. Oh, you know what would be a great segment for the show? Never tweet. Why? Can I tell you about my never tweet? Well, okay. What? Sometimes when you tweet stuff, I'm like, Steve, you know what you're in for. Oh, yeah. And I could hear you saying to me, don't tweet that because you so don't what did that I tweet? headache. I, I, I read it this weekend, but please take it. Uh, I was talking about Jordan Bennington getting fined mm -hmm. for high sticking. Uh, the butt end of his stick into a Nashville player, wasn't it? Thomasino? I don't remember who it was. Doesn't matter. Um, Evangelista? I'm they okay. are the Italian name capital of the NHL right now. They are. Um, it was Evangelista. There you go. Yeah. So they uh, they uh, they fine him five grand for butting and butt ending him in the face. Now, I said verbatim that it's it's not <laughs> comparable to Riley. Like it's not five games, and the reason I said that. Is because had I commented on Bennington, Matt, you want to pull that one up? Had I commented on what Bennington did, there's the stick, there's the face. Without mentioning Riley, it would have been mentioned for me. Sure. Oh, you're just salty, man. So I got ahead of it and said it anyway. But this is a player who was suspended less than a year ago. And my thought is if you've been suspended within the calendar year, you're not eligible to be fined. Because you're a known dick. No, actually, when you get suspended more, you become closer to the player safety and they become friendly. Yeah, and George... Like just, we keep meeting this way. <laughs> and, like, like people like a were like, oh, he apologized after. I don't give a shit. No, like, like, most players who get fined or suspended apologize after. The Blues were down 5-2. and In the Jor third. Jordan Bennington decided to shit his diaper. Yeah. Yes. They were down 5-2 late in, in a... It's, the game is over. It's over. So it's not comparable to what Riley did in terms of violence. It's obviously not the same. However, it's the same bullshit. It's a stick infraction to the face and head of a player in the dying minutes of a game that's, that's over. That's outside of a hockey play. Like it's, The game's over. Yeah. And he got fined. Like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. What's the point? I thought he, he should have got one less game. than a year ago. I thought it, he shot one game. For yes, that. any fine should be an automatic game because that has for a player who's been suspended within the last year. That also has nothing to do with the play. It's just mm -hmm. it's just chicken shit. And and the yes! and the thing with Bennington that I've always had an issue with is that he knows that as a goalie you can't touch him. If yes. a player goes in and fights Jordan Bennington, the player is getting suspended and Bennington will be fine. So he uses that. And I think it's it's just he's he's chicken shit. And I think he's it's so funny watching like the flames desert Matthew Kachuk in public. Well, well uh, like, notably quite the mistake. The one thing that I would say is that this, the St. Louis Blues have never deserted Bennington. And if there's no. ever a player who deserved it. Oh, my God. <laughs> like if there's ever a player that you're like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to stand up for you here. That's the guy.
That's the guy, not Who? Matthew Kachuk. Yeah, okay. I was about to compare him to Nick Cousins. Here's the difference. Bennington wants to fight someone. <laughs> yeah, Nick Cousins doesn't want to fight. He, he, he has Why would he want to fight? He's, it's, it's working so well. What else will do it for me? Here's yeah. Sam Bennett, and he, who's a diver, and here's Matthew Kachuk, and here's uh, Ryan Lomberg. And, yeah. You know, the, like, they'll fight, except for him. But the rest of them will fight. Mm -hmm. uh, Bennington, like... By the way, the lack of empathy when Nick Cousins got injured was telling. Uh yeah. yeah, like every team around the league was like, mm. well, too bad. The lack of uh rebuttal. To no, yeah. nobody said anything. Well, dude, we didn't even really talk about it on the show when um Cousins was finally asked about BX's quote. And he's like, oh, I'd like to talk to him in person. You would just talk. He would just talk. And BX would be like, hey, so uh, you're a rat. <laughs> Like, which and you get I, paid, and you're good at it. I hope he would say, like, you know, I know a lot of people don't like Don Cherry, but like when Matt Cook confronted him, tiny little, anyone who's ever met Don Cherry, that's a tiny guy. Tiny guy, tiny hands. Just, Matt Cook went, oh, I bet you wouldn't say that to my face. And Cherry said, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what he said, but like, he's like, yeah, well, I, 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 mean, I said it on air and I'll tell it to your face. And Matt Cook was enough of a villain at that point that you would have expected him to beat up a senior citizen. Yes. Uh, yes. He'd done everything else. At now point. he's in the Leafs organization. He's a good guy. Well, there's Fine. okay. There have been articles written about that. I think oh, really? one came out this weekend about like how he's changing his image and whatever. I'm like, listen, all right. I don't care whose organization <laughs> is. You'll right. always be Matt Cook to me. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Let's, no, now he's in the Leafs organization. Stand up model model citizen. I'm going back and I was watching the uh, the last time Jordan Bennington was suspended less than a year ago. Less than when, a freaking year ago. When he decided to go punch Ryan Hartman in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, I I'll play. I'll play it off screen. You can't show this, but it's so egregious. So Hartman comes over. And he like he scores yeah. right, and then so it's like a clean goal, a That's clean goal. But he fifth he, goal of the game. So he he knocked, really hates letting in the fifth goal of the game. He knocks uh, Bennington's pad a little as he's going to celebrate. Bennington's right? out of the crease though. So so yeah. Bennington no, kind of slides into him, and Hartman nicks his pad on the back of it. So Bennington des decides to get up. And just fist him in the face <laughs> with with his blocker, blocker stick yeah. hand. The stick is still in his hand. Man, imagine that what was Morgan Riley. Though? Okay, okay. Can I show you the wrong response? Look at Joel Erickson Eck. Here, here. Go, go forward a sec. Oh, go. <laughs> oh, they they put up a little, little graph. Here, go. Here, wait. Okay, pa pause. No, no. Now pause. Yeah, put that on the screen. <laughs> put that on the that? What am I? <laughs> Wow, it's like watching the Toronto Maple Leafs. Dude, help your pal! <laughs> He's like, hey, oh, hey, Joel Erickson Eck is an Italian last name. I just learned. And uh, Dude, oh my god! If, <gasps> if anybody deserves any praise in this situation, it's Marc Andre Fleury, uh, one of the greatest hockey people of all time, who decided to try and fight Bennington, but Bennington ran away. Scared. Of course, he did. you remember? Of course, he did. You remember Fire. how this sequence played out? There was no real a scuffle between Bennington and and Flurry, but like the refs got involved, but still, there, Flurry wanted to. Flurry wanted the challenge. There are two fights in NHL history that NHL officials should never be forgiven for, <laughs> uh, for breaking up. Bennington versus Flurry, you should never be forgiven ever, ever, yep. ever. No one should ever forget that you stopped that fight from happening. And Dion Phaneuf versus Jerome Ginla. Oh, I'll never forgive them. That should have happened. Never forgive that them. They both happened. wanted to go and they broke it up. Never forgive you. Can I we, think Ginla was still in the flames. Can we just say that uh, that if they want to go, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Boo. Um. All right. Now, uh, I just want to throw this. Uh, I want to throw this uh, tweet at Walker you guys. Walker ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, tweet. Now we we obviously know that Columbus has been going through a really bad time. Yes. And that nobody except for all of their fans could have seen this coming. From the time that they fired John Tortorella, Brad Larson, the guy who took over. Um, they did not like him. They didn't like him. They didn't like the moves they were making. They didn't like anything. Basically, since Columbus beat the Leafs, it's been all downhill. What a monkey. Literally. What a monkey's paw. Eh? Uh, get rid of Brad Larson. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get Mike Babcock, well, which then leads to Pascal Vincent. The, the Blue Jackets, who are not known as a... Like, they're always spending the cap, yeah. but they're not known as, like, a crazy spending team on, uh, like, on their management side. They've got good management. They've got... They're well-funded, but it's not crazy like the Leafs or the Rangers or some of those other teams. 
They are currently playing Brad Larson. No. Mike Babcock. No. Yarmo Kekalainen. No. Yeah. And the, so right now, uh, it, they're also paying Alex Wenberg, who's got two more years after this one. No! Including Pascal Vincent, the Blue Jackets are paying three head coaches, a GM, and a buyout. That's Mark Scheig on uh, on Twitter. Um, and uh, I just think it's funny that in this situation, and I can relate to this as a Leaf fan, we saw this coming in 2013. Seems like a long time ago now. We're like, this team's bad. They're bad, oh and you should God. be sad. And the t- and the Leafs kept saying, "No, we're not." We were, and we kept saying, "Yes, you are." And they kept kept getting worse. And we're like, "You're bad," and they're like, "No, we're not." The entire digital fan base, the entire blogosphere, was the scientist in a disaster movie. It it, it, no! was, it was like, "Don't look up." You ever see "Don't Look Up"? Yeah, I've the asteroid's coming. Up. Just don't look up. Yeah, just don't look up. It feels like if the Blue Jackets now, you're not supposed to always listen to your fans. But I think Blue Jackets fans are wise enough to understand that this is not a well-run organization. And so I must ask again this week, as John Davidson searches for the next general manager of the Columbus Blue Jackets, why is John Davidson still working there? All of these people went through him. All of these people went through him. He hired Yarmo. He approved all of Yarmo's hires. Why is this still happening? And, And by the way, in my mind, What's happened with the Blue Jackets, like pre-Brad Larson, John Tortorella deserves a ton of credit for keeping that organization on. Mm-hmm. Wow, the, he, he kept air in the lungs. They had some good seasons under him. I, this is this is rotten, dude. He was all the way through. He was the president, twenty twelve through twenty nineteen. Left for a couple years, I think. Mm-hmm. I want to say he went back to St. Louis. Not like St. Louis. And uh, there's a throwback. And he's rejoined. And man, oh, man, oh, man. Like, I understand. Like, we we came up with the theory on this show that he probably laid out his plan for the deadline. Management was like, <laughs> that plan sucks. And they fired him. We don't him. trust you to execute this plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Why is this guy still at the helm, dude? D- like, okay, we know the on-ice product is bad. Okay, some presidents are really good at managing the owner and making that owner money. Is this guy? Um, NHL Network from March 8th, 2022 interview with John Davidson. We're in pretty good shape. We're building this thing one brick at a time. As we come up on March 8th, 2024, how do you think the last two years have gone? Uh, It's rough, guys. It's rough. And I just, I know the family isn't that, you know, isn't they're the, the, the in hands on. They're not hands on. Maybe they ought to just for a little bit, for a couple months, get hands on, find someone. And I'm not saying John Davidson's a bad guy, but I think what happens here is sometimes you're in it for too long. Mm-hmm. You know, too many people, you owe allegiance to too many people and you go, I know we got a problem in that department, but that's my buddy. And I can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or I hired that person and I can't. Mm -hmm. it's time for the Blue Jackets to get ruthless. This general manager job that they have available is a spectacular opportunity. Whoever takes over is going to have talent to sell and talent to develop and the draft capital to bring more on. This this team in five years should be among the top in the league. They should be a top three team every year. I don't think that's unreasonable. Well, (laughs) top three is pretty high. Top five? Dude, they should be in the playoffs. Look Look how mid the Metro has been. And they're at the bottom of it. It's not a great division. And they're nowhere near being even sort of competitive. Yeah. Crazy. They got a fun win the other day. I really That's like it. the idea of them bringing in Matthew Darsh to be their next GM. Uh, because he was the first ever draft pick by the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's Jacket. cool. That'd be a cool story. It'd be a very cool, hey, full circle moment for Darsh. And like that's a dude who's been in line for ev- every time there's a opening gig in the NHL. Everyone's like, Matthew Darsh could take it. You He's know, in danger of uh, being Mike Fuda. <laughs> Never getting one. Well, just, oh, Mike Fuda's up for this job. He's up for this job. He's up for his job. He's co workers with Steve Dangle at Sportsnet. <laughs> like, and, and like, Great guy, great resume, and just never got the job. Right. So, like, if if, the, if they're willing to pry him away from the Lightning, 
that's a really good job, you know, for him to take over. But it's like, do you trust the people above him to give this talented young individual the keys to run the office? Or is there going to be meddling and we're not going to see what he's actually capable of as general manager? Like, I know it seems sort of unfair to Kekalainen and, and Davidson that they there is this really nice base. Mm-hmm. Um, but this happens across sports where some guy... Every every single team that wins a championship a few years after gassing everyone, there's fingerprints from the previous regime there. Sure. Look at the Leafs. The yeah. only thing they really changed was the GM. Everything else is the same. Oh, you mean this year? Yeah. Like, yeah, like there's still fingerprints from... But like the year they finally made the playoffs with Matthews, like they had guys on the roster that John Ferguson Jr. drafted. All right. That was like three or four GMs ago at the time. Like, it it takes a village, right? It takes different perspectives. Um, and just because a new guy goes in there doesn't mean he's going to be like, I think I hate the guy we picked fourth overall. I think I'm going to trade Adam Fantelli for a sixth. <laughs> like, that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Unless Mike Milbury's in charge. That's it right. rarely happens. That's right. It rarely happens. That whoever gets in there, uh, but we're looking at it wrong. We're looking at the pieces they have on the board. We're not looking at who controls the board. Yeah, it's not you. If you're the GM, it's not you. It's the president. It's the president, and then it's their boss. It's their boss. So like, uh. You know, are you, you know, the question, are you coachable? It's, it's like the inverse of that. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to get out of the way and let your employees give you success? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Now, um, I want to talk about just a couple of things, um, before we roll, because we got to talk about the PWHL game. I want to dedicate some time to that, but for the first, for the first time in my, in my career, it's not the first time. I really felt as though time has passed Lou Lemorello by. And it, oh, and it was it was the moment. <laughs> it was the moment where I saw the New York Rangers roll up to the stadium series game in FDNY trucks. I saw the Flyers come in in Rocky sweatsuits. I saw the Devils come in in uh, Sopranos, Sopranos track suits. And the freaking Islanders have to show up in their suits. And I thought it was funny. I I also thought it was really funny. I yeah. think that I think there's a reason they lost that game. <laughs> oh, oh shut boy. up! And I think no it was Lou. Way. I think shut it was Lou. No, 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 no. Say, it was Lou. Say it into the camera. The New York Islanders lost because they wore suits again. The New York Islanders lost because they can't have any fun in an unfun year. And no, you can't have fun even at the Stadium Series. Sorry, boys. No. And that's and you know what? They got a whole nothing out of it. You're you're wrong. I know why they lost. Also, it was probably the best Stadium Series game any of us have ever seen. But it was a great game, was a great but game. I know why they lost. Why did they lose? Because Matt Martin didn't fight twice. Is that what it is? Yeah. They were down one nothing. He fought. They went up 4-1. He should have fought again. That is when you go for fight number two, or at very least when they make it 4-2. Yeah. Then you get into a second fight, but nope, they end up losing 6-5 in overtime. I just wonder, and I honestly do wonder, and I... and I, uh, 6-5 or 5-4? Does, does Lou account for vibes? <laughs> I don't think Lou has ever accounted. Vibes, vibes matter, though. He's had teams that had vibes. Well, okay, wait. Isn't this is the dorkiest thing ever said by a human mouth? Is professionalism a vibe? Yes. Yeah. Like so. That's their vibe. That yeah. their vibe that? is. We don't subscribe to your dorky bullshit. Mm-hmm. We shave our faces. We shave our faces. We wear our suits. That's what we do. It's and we, we blow four one leads. Well, <laughs> wow, it's, it sounds a lot like the Lou Leafs. Well, uh, okay, you know what's you know what sucks about hockey as a copycat sport? Guaranteed, if the Islanders win that game, no one ever does a gimmicky bullshit. I don't think. Over. I think <laughs> those days are over. I think they're the last. He's the last holdout. I think everybody else is like, yeah. I think we can and let that's human fine. beings have fun. I think it's fine for Lou to be the last guy to implement these kinds of things. It's fine. It's so him. It's fun. It's 
It, it's it, fun in a yes. different way. It's it, it, like the the fire truck is fun because of the fire truck. This is fun because it's absurd that you have these kinds of rules, and that's the fun side of that. If anyone else did it, I'd be like, you, st- yeah. you stupid, no fun tyrant. And Lou does it. I'm like, lol. It's and like he's so old that he's doing a meme at this point. Yeah. Like he's in his 80s telling everyone, no, you have to come to work, shave your face, and wear a suit. And yeah, if someone who wasn't Lou Lamorello did it, it'd be stupid. But because it's him, mm-hmm. because it's him, like it, it makes sense. made me laugh. It makes sense. Now, uh, okay, so the information, I'm, I'm jumping back to this because this is important. The information about Morgan Riley and why. Ugh. Oh, you got the report from Batman? He was rejected. You guys ready for this? Yeah. I just sure. want to read it to you. Okay. Sorry, this is happening in real time, so you have to excuse the, the jumping Inter- back and forth on the podcast. Pardon the interruption. The cr- should, so p- one of the line items that they talk about as to why why the suspension was upheld is the cross check was delivered as retribution for an unnecessary and seldom seen play that Mr. Riley believed may have been intended to embarrass Toronto. Although, honestly, the game was embarrassing for Toronto. So. May have been intended. Okay. Although much of the tes- testimony offered by Messrs, Riley, Treliving, and uh, Shanahan at the hearing concerned whether Mr. Griggs' slap shot was provocative, that discussion, according to the NHL, is utterly irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Mr. Riley's actions <laughs> well, were as it should be. not yeah. undertaken in self-defense. They were not accidental and were not reflexive. They were not simply careless or merely reckless. With plenty of time to think about what was going on and what to do next, Mr. Riley approached Mr. Griggs from the side and used his stick. Yeah, hard to no, disagree. If, with that. if, because you're suspending the action, yes. and there was yes. nothing that provoked him physically to do that action, so you can't take into account how obscene a slap shot is. You know, like that's not fair. They, uh, they put a little stank on it, though. They did put some stank. They didn't have to say. They, they could have just said irrelevant. Yeah, utterly irrelevant. Hmm. Huh? Finally, I commend Mr. Riley for forthrightly disavowing suggestions that have been made publicly by others that his actions were somehow appropriate. Certainly, the conduct leading to this suspension is out of character with the long record of clean play in the NHL. It is my hope and expectation the events leading to this suspension were an aberration that will not be repeated. Sheldon Keefe better button that yap. Sheldon Keefe's going to lose his mind. No, no, because that's a direct shot at Sheldon Keefe. Yeah. Because he said, I thought they were appropriate. There's yeah. a reason they use those words. They're talking about him. Uh, if he is like, yeah, I don't know about that high sticking call. Like, they're, he's going to get dinged 25 grand. 100%. That's a shot across the bow for sure. Yep. Yeah. They, they did not like that. Yep. Wow. Well, I. <laughs> Which makes you wonder how, like, I mean, if they didn't like that quote, how isn't Paul Maurice in jail? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I think I think that's Gary. Gary, he's a bit like you have to think of him like the Godfather. Uh, if the Godfather was a guy that you you definitely like, the Godfather's a likable character. So if the Godfather was not a likable character, then you you insert Gary Bettman there, and that's him. It's like a little warning, like send this to your friend, you know, like let him know. Mm. Mm. And I wonder, I wonder here if, yeah, the next time Sheldon says something, which would probably be in the the playoffs, that, that game one, the amount of money (laughs) that is going to be handed down when that Leafs Florida series kicks off. Um, God, I really hope not. Yeah. Well, I think that's what's going to happen. I wanted to quickly mention the PWHL game and not quickly mention it was enormously successful. The most watched in person game, Battle of Bay Street, incredible. Um, and I just, you know, I want to get a firsthand account from somebody who was there and producer Maddie was in the audience. And Maddie, you got a little emotional. Did you not? Yeah, I did. Um, I mean, I've been playing hockey since I was nine. Um, and I think any girl growing up playing hockey who's around my age now in their twenties or late, like early thirties, anything like that. If you were at that game, it was kind of just like, It felt like my inner child was like healed a bit, honestly, watching it. Um, I've never been to a women's hockey game that electric, and I never thought that I would see anything like that, um, of that capacity at least, like maybe, I don't know, the Olympics or something. But um, to see uh, so many little girls with like signs in the audience being like, I play like a girl and I'm proud of it. And like, everybody's just cheering. And like, there's so much support and all these like house league teams around Toronto came and were like cheering the whole time nonstop. Like it was like louder than any Leafs game I've been to. And it was really for the fans. 
Um, and yeah, it was just, I went with some of my friends and they didn't even know how hockey worked. Um, and I had to explain like offsides and all this stuff to them, but they Good were luck. so into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just said, basically you can't stand beside the net or whatever, <laughs> uh, the opponent team, but yeah, no, it was, uh, just seeing people just wanting to be there and support the game, even non-fans and, uh, and watching kind of just, you know, not just sports history, but just women's history, like, mm -hmm. happen in real time was was very cool to to be a part of and see. But, uh... It's cool. Yeah. It's really cool. I, it's... And Toronto won, so... And Toronto won. That yeah, was a lot of people... Three nothing. Yeah, yeah I went on Toronto first month, uh, a month and a bit in the season. I was like, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's a month into a new, a new, brand new season. Now Toronto's at, like, the second place in the in the standing so I, it's nice i um the support for the pwhl is even greater than i anticipated and i've been trying to figure out like okay what's behind that like well like why is this a surprise like i could previous leagues have done quite what the pwhl did the other day yeah and you know there was a years-long debate about a lot of players didn't like when you brought up having one league. They didn't yeah. like when you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, it just feels like fans have one direction to, to, to point their energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what yes. makes it beautiful. Well, it's what makes it beautiful, but also it makes it easier to cheer for, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I wonder if that's part of it. It makes it easier to cheer for. Oh, yeah. yeah. One no, absolutely. Now it let's makes put, sense. Like, yeah, let's put <laughs> all our energy into this. Yeah, when it was the PWHPA and their showcases and then the NWHL and, and the PHF eventually, it didn't, It to the average person, you couldn't explain to them, like, hey, What's the professional women's league like once you're out of college, once you're done going to Cornell, where do you go and play? You right. know, and that wasn't an easy conversation. It's one thing you talk about with the game of hockey all the time is that like they make it so difficult for the NHL makes it difficult yeah. for the average person. Women's hockey was difficult at that moment to explain it. And now it's just so easy. I also want oh, to say they that have this league with three with six teams and this is how it works. Fans got combative about it too. The 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 sniping from from different fans of women hockey women's hockey from different community like one of the things that like was very very difficult was it's like well if if you are a fan of this league then you can't be a fan of that one that's what it became yeah not and, everyone well but, it like, did there was, online. let's not let's not, not acknowledge that no there was an element of it there an element a vicious element of it that was intense and it yeah. took away from the enjoyment of the product. So it's nice to see this come together. Like uh, it wasn't, it wasn't a pleasant element. Let's be honest. I'll just be straight up about that. No, that was a few years ago. And, and well, but it, it took, it took all that shit to get here mm -hmm. and see that. And you know, for people that were in attendance, um, Nat, Maddie said something interesting. She said it was for the fans. Mm -hmm. What's the last time the Leafs did something that was for the fans? Oh, they had a free exhibition game once. Or they go skate outside at Nathan Phillips Square. Yeah. It, it feels like, like everything the PWHL does is for the fans, right? Totally. I think since the start, it has been. Like, I don't know. And I also feel like, too, um, and I think this is mentioned, some one of you mentioned this on the show before, but the players enjoy getting interviewed. They answer questions very well, and they have a lot of fun with it. And I think that there's a lack of that with the NHL structure a little bit because they're getting interviews all the time. Like me and Adam, for example, like when we went to the Pepsi event, you know, Sam Reinhart was great, very nice guy, super positive, but you could tell that this happens to him every day. And uh, with Natalie Spooner, like she was giving us like, great fun content and again it's not that sam wasn't but you can tell like she is so thrilled and every one of those players is so thrilled to finally give representation to like just a wide range audience just like the nhl has like it's just so beautiful and natalie is a star she's a star she's, right she's a the, the, i've been the, looking the, up to her for years yeah. the thing about natalie spooner we've known her for a long long time personally we've been lucky mm -hmm. enough to do events and stuff with her predating this, like CWHL stuff was like asking. Like a decade ago. Um, is that Natalie's personality is every room that she walks into, she's a star. Not every NHL player is going to be like that. You're never like, oh, Natalie. But, the, <laughs> but I think Maddie's got a point in the stars per capita, like the big personalities per capita, far bigger in the PWHL. They're the, very good at selling this game. The PWH, the players in the PWHL haven't taken for granted 
that they have a product they're trying yes. to sell. Yes. Mm-hmm. And this is what I, the drum that I keep beating and look at the fruit that it's bared. Like, look at what it's given them. Look at what the, look at the success, the accelerated success that the league is having. Yeah. You, they shouldn't be doing this well year one. Yeah. That's no, just they not shouldn't. how it works. They shouldn't. No. It's just not how it works for the vast majority of things, but there's been such a build up to it. Um, and they're, and the buy in of like the buy in of the in. players is like accelerated the growth of this league in a month and a half, and it's been incredible to 100%, see. 100%. 100%. No, it's uh, it's awesome, dude. It's no, it's fun. cool. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It was a pretty cool experience. Too. So, from there, Jesse, should we do a press conference or were we wrap it? Sure, we never we didn't do uh, Nashville in the sphere. Oh, okay. dude, oh. we didn't do a 10 7 game between the Canucks. We didn't do that yeah. either. Yeah, That's there's true. a lot of hockey do, stuff. I mean, we could save it for tomorrow or we can do. Uh, I want to do Nashville. We got time. Tomorrow. Yeah, we got show we got tomorrow. Time. Yeah, we got time. Do you want to do you have time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's, let's do it. Let's talk about the uh, in the in the Tennessee. And I think they had the, the best little summary of that. <laughs> Go ahead, read it. Um, oh, yeah. Here, let me uh, bring up just the main issue. So last week, the, or I should preface this with like tonight, Nashville's playing Vegas. Okay. The Nashville Predators playing the Vegas Golden Knights tonight in Vegas. And for a long time now, a couple months, the Nashville Predators had a team trip and team and staff trip planned for Sunday or Monday in Vegas. They were mm-hmm. all going to take a trip. They were going to go there early and they were going to watch U2 at the Sphere. Oh, this. <laughs> but yes, 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 in yes. the last week, Nashville has not played well, and the team decided to cancel the trip to this. Andrew Burnett specifically. Andrew Barry Trotz specifically. Oh, was it? I yeah. thought it was Andrew that did it. Well, okay. it's it's uh it's a group decision. I'm sure it's, a it's joint Trotz and, and Burnett and everybody. So well, Hockey Night in Canada very definitely put it on Burnett then. <laughs> They're like, it's him, he's the evil one. This is from Paul in the Tennessee, and I'll read it. Um, the team flew to Vegas on Monday morning ahead of Tuesday night's game. Uh, Sportsman's Elliot Friedman said on Monday in his 32 Thoughts podcast that Trotz and Brunette were behind the decision to cancel the trip, mm. which reportedly had been in the works for a while. Brunette hinted at his frustrations following the loss to the Stars, in which former Preds forward Matt Duchesne scored two goals. Yeah, was- and then played it. <laughs> and played then a bar- he played it a yeah. bar! And then he he shut down Nashville that night. Dude, Unbelievable. That, does, that makes it worse. That's right? Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. It makes it worse. Brunette ran the team hard during practice fr- Friday before the team departed for St. Louis. We're having trouble getting getting our mind around what's important, and that's hockey, he said. It's not everything else that goes around hockey. Our mind has to be on the game. It can't be on our vacations. Turns out he wasn't talking about the vacations his players had just taken during All-Star break. He was talking about the Vegas trip. Two days earlier, after a loss to to the New Jersey Devils, Brunette said his team wasn't that interested to be in the playoffs. Friedman called it a big, big deal internally. He said Trotz told him he said Trotz told him the team's standards had slipped below expectation oh and that a message had to be sent not only to the players but the fans with whom the optics of such an outing could be bad. Our mind our minds haven't been right since the break, Brunette said after Friday's practice. It's not been us the last three games. You can sense when you're slipping, and I sensed it. We didn't come ready to practice Monday, and it's kind of carried us through the week. So mm-hmm. there's two camps in this. It's the yeah, you gotta punish the you like you can't reward the guys for playing bad and send them to Vegas and have a good trip. But that can also be a bonding experience where you get their minds off of the hockey game, you get them back into it, they have a good game in Vegas. The staff who was gonna go now don't get to go, and it's on the players who yeah, played bad. Because that's the key, right? It's the staff. Yeah, right. so now yeah. all the staff who were gonna go to the game, but it wasn't just gonna be the players, they also now can't go. And internally that's a big deal. And then there's the hey, if you're playing like shit. You're the hockey team. The players are the driver of this whole thing. You are the reason that so they're we embarrassing make money. the players. If they had embarrassing like you, shit. so everybody gets their toy taken away. Yep. This is fair. So yep. where do you guys land on this? Well, so it's mean of management to do this to the players and their staff. But if they hadn't played like shit for those three games, if they had won even one of them, or gone like one, one, and one, they're going to that concert, and yeah. then it's not a big deal, and it's not even a story. But they've been playing like crap. There's only so many ways uh, you can you can uh, you know wield the hammer. Um, you, I mean, you can't take their contract away. <laughs> you can send guys down, mm-hmm. I suppose. 
Um, you know, because of the collective bargaining agreement, there's only so many practices you can do in a week. So one of the only shots across the bow you can send is we're not going to a concert. And like, this is not a high school field trip. I'm going to remind everyone. These are grown adult men's, a lot of them fathers who don't get to go to a concert. They'll live. <laughs> They'll be okay. It yeah. sucks. The millionaire sucks. hockey players will be okay. There, it's yes. what yeah. about the what all about these the dudes who manager? just got back from Cancun? What about the equipment manager who was excited to go see you too? Well, it's, the guys he's the equipment manager for should have played better <laughs> for him. You go. You're, you take it out on UC Soros. <laughs> well, fucking play better. Like yeah. there, there's only so many things you get to do. This is obviously, uh, you know, yes, it's Andrew Burnett uh, as the coach, but like. Barry Trotz has been a coach in the NHL for decades and decades and been with the Predators for decades and decades. He's a Stanley Cup champion. Like, those things give you some weight and some clout. And this is a head coach's decision uh, that is born from the opinion of a really well-respected, tenured head coach. Don't play like shit. I can tell you this, if it were the Leafs and they went to the concert after losing three straight like that, doesn't matter where they are in the standings, they would be torched, torched do, do you in, in Toronto media. Tor remember they went fishing over the All-Star break and people were pissed about that? They, oh, are you still fishing, boys? They made the playoffs that year. Oh, yeah. No, there was one they where they- They were fucking fishing. They had a bad California trip. Oh, yeah. And they went to like, the next day they were posting pictures <laughs> at like Disneyland. Mm -hmm. And like- <laughs> I remember the conversation. The bad like, one. Like, yeah, the bad one. The one no, in I, California. I liked it. But like, <laughs> like you're allowed to go to Disneyland. Mm -hmm. Don't post a picture of it. Yeah, because people don't react well on the internet. I'm not, I don't know if you've learned that yet. <laughs> also, no one wants to see that shit. Like, yeah. you just got your ass kicked. No one wants to see that. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And Instagram back then didn't have the... They now have, like, your own Finsta built into your account. So you can yeah. tap your icon twice and just flip it around to your friends. And, like, what? Like, do, do Preds fans want to say, it's a beautiful day? No. Ah. And, like, I'd like to... Roman Yossi having a great time? No! I would like to inject my opinion here, though. Sure. If I could. Sure. Uh, the, the Nashville Predators were not wrong to cancel this trip. Okay. The Nashville Predators were wrong for something else. Barry Trotz is to blame for this, but not in the way that you think. Barry Trotz is to blame for this by building the team that he has built so far. The team has <laughs> Gus Nyquist as their top right winger, and they're expecting to make the playoffs. What's What are the lines, Adam? Read, the, read them. Phil Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Gus Nyquist. Love Forsberg, love O'Reilly. O'Reilly on a great team is not your first first line center. Well, I mean, you could look at the Leafs and be like, all right, it's Matthews, it's Barger, it's a rookie. Okay. Every, a lot it's of not top Matthews, line. not even close. Steve a lot of not Matthews. Steve's not right. Austin Matthews is going to score as many goals as Ryan O'Reilly will get points this no year. No one likes Are you say kidding it. me? A lot of top guys are star, star guy. They are. Steve's not wrong at all. Uh, he you is don't wrong. need to like go to Google for what's Ryan O'Reilly. What are Ryan O'Reilly's stats? What what's, are Ryan O'Reilly? No, no, they're good. If he's Matthews. They're good. If he's Matthews. They're good. Oh, oh Matthews no. has two more goals than O'Reilly has points. Yes. Stop. No one said not comparable. What's the second line? Not comparable. What's the second line? The second line is Yakov Trenin, Colton Sissons, and Cody Glass. See, Colton Sissons I would. Has had that, a very good season. That sucks. Tommy Novak, Mark Yankowski, Yankowski, and Luke Evangelista, who we were just talking about. Mark Jank Jankowski? Jankowski. Oh, okay. And sorry. Who, oh, that was so different from what I said. Yes, it was. Oh, did you mean, get it right. I'm going to go to Google. Jankowski sure right. sound does not sound like Jankowski. I'm going to go to Google. And then your fourth line, which really doesn't matter on any team, Cole Smith, Michael McCarron, and Kiefer Sherwood. My point is this. The, the Nashville Predators front office should be fucking thrilled that they're even sniffing playoffs this year. Right. That they're even close. And oh my God, they got embarrassed three games in a row. This team was projected to be among the worst in the Western Conference, and they somehow have not been. Adam. That is, no, uh, no, uh, that is the real crime here. 
That's the real crime here. These guys have outperformed expectations the entire year. So, so what do Brunette and Trotz do? They look at the last week and they go, you know what? Fuck all your effort. You're not going, and we're going to embarrass you in front of the staff too. All right. I think it's bullshit. To for, and for even more context, because you said three-game loss. They only lost the two games. They lost oh, to really? the, the Devils 4-2 on, uh, what was that? Tuesday, okay. and then they had the nine-two loss against the Stars, Ooh. and apparently that is kind of yeah. how those two games. And then they won on Saturday. They beat the Blues. Yeah. So well, Jesse, wait, their most recent game was a win. Yeah, yeah. against but the Blues. Was, what? It, the, they canceled the trip on on Thursday, Friday. Well, it lo- looks like then, they were right because they won against the Blues. And Jesse, then they they came out and they won. Where do we all okay, have that Nashville? Kind of Where do we honestly all have Nashville? In our, I don't I don't expect you guys to actually remember that. Uh, Where do we have them? Six out of eight. Maybe five out of eight. I, maybe scrapping for a playoff spot. I want to be able to. I want to pull this up. This team is way outperforming what it should be. Well, okay, way outperforming. And the players should be commended for that. What's Andrew Brunette's... Okay, you've converted me. What's Andrew Brunette's job, though, with this roster? Squeeze blood from a stone. No. And they're squeezing harder. Encourage. Encourage support. They are. They're encouraging Say, guys, with hammers. You know what you do? After <laughs> Matt Duchesne embarrasses you, go, guys, I'm really fucking pissed. And if you don't win against St. Louis, if you don't win against St. Louis, there's going to be hell to pay. And the only reason and that's an I'm thing. not canceling the, the trip to you 2 is because there are team staff involved. But I want you to know, I would have canceled it. And there will be no other team excursions for the rest of the year if you can't blah, blah, blah. I get that. But canceling this, U2 is not going to be at the Sphere after March 3rd or whatever it is. Um, it's To me, this team should be looked at on a six-month or a three-month basis, not a three-game basis. What are we doing here? These guys are, are, listen, I love Ryan O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. I don't think he signed in Nashville to play in the playoffs this year. Mm-hmm. I think he signed for year two and year three to make the playoffs, but no one was expecting that. And I'm just saying that's a heck of a way to reward a roster who's making you look a lot smarter than you actually were. This summer, they made some some interesting choices. Interesting. And they're not any better. And frankly, they're not any closer to any of the goals they would have had. If you're if you're Nashville, you really should be looking at it and going, I mean, we got Forsberg, we got Yossi. If we had a bad year, we could grab an, a, a, a good young player and then we can be right back in this thing, right? Everybody wants to sign here. Everybody wants to play here. Yep. Tax-free state. We have UC Soros. There's so many reasons to believe Nashville can be right back up there again. Mm-hmm. But this was not the year. They've outperformed it. And and fantastic. Now you're going to finish 14th and uh, or sorry, 18th out of 32. You won't make the playoffs and uh, and you robbed your team and your staff. That's the killer thing. The staff. guys making 60, 70, 80 grand traveling around with these guys being away from their families, which I guess that they, you know, they chose that, that. is your the but what you signed. But I'm for, sorry. But, you yeah. can still say thank you. Yeah. Uh, here's the one piece of the equation we're missing. What is it? So I'm a little surprised they were still punished now looking at the standings. I'm a little surprised they were punished after beating St. Louis because that's literally the team you need to beat. Mm-hmm. Well, they couldn't right now. take back. like They couldn't get back the tickets. Yeah. No. Oh, <laughs> oh that. They got rid know. of it before the St. Well, Louis game. They canceled it like Fridays when this all happened, and then they end up winning on Saturday. So the position... Builds, if, a, if, builds a team not to make the playoffs, and when they don't make the playoffs, he's like, well, you guys can't do anything fun. Yeah. The, Give me a fucking break, any team with Gus Nyquist as your top-line right wingers making the playoffs. Ask Columbus about that. They've had that the last couple of years. Every year someone trades for him, and every year I'm like, you sure? Um, listen, the Preds have 58 points. The Jets have 71. They're not getting one of those top three spots. No. In the, no, it's, 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 it's a wild card. So you're, yeah, you're fighting for a wild card. You're two points behind St. Louis, same amount of games played. Yeah. So you're right there. And the Kings, yeah, they're within reach. Um, it's not great. They have 64 points and two games in hand on you. It's not great. Mm-hmm. There's a real solid chance, a real solid chance. If the Predators scrape into the playoffs, who are they playing? Dallas. That was a measuring... So the only thing that's missing from our discussion is what was the preparation and what was the expectation heading into that game? Because it obviously meant something to the Predators that they lost that game in particular. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is Duchesne. It's well, and, and it's you know Duchesne who wins? and also you have to beat that freaking team. You know yeah. who completes the hat trick? Matt Duchesne. Mm-hmm. 
Because he got you to cancel an entire trip on his behalf. And then when he already hung two on you, music, and he hung two on you already, and now the entire team has to suffer. Did you know that's that he plays Matt the guitar? Matt Duchesne is laughing right now, having the best time. Why isn't Matt Duchesne ever mentioned he plays the guitar? I, he, I've heard he likes country music. It should be heard. mentioned. I just it should be mentioned. I don't know. I think you gave Duchesne and the Stars another victory too. Yeah, I think, I think they're like they're feeling so good about themselves right now, and they should. Now. Additional question. Please. Mm -hmm. Did the Preds make an announcement that we are not going to a U2 concert? No, it came out. Someone because a lot of people, it. like the report says, the people internally, it was a big deal that this was canceled. So I tell you what, if I'm, if I'm uh, Barry Trotz and I'm in a bad mood, I canceled that trip. I thought about it and I go, maybe I shouldn't have. And then the story comes out. And I'm glad I did. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I did. Why because, is that? Uh, because, no, and that's, that yeah. I took. Why? You're, you're an adult man, a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I said you couldn't go to a concert because you haven't been doing a great job recently, and you went and you leaked team information to a journalist. How do you know it was a player? It could be it, ooh, but like, no, but that... I don't think to, it was... Ooh, to, Adam, to you're doing Steve's a great point, job, man. <laughs> you're doing a great job. To Steve's point, that proves that Barry Trotz and Brunette's idea that their heads aren't in the right place is confirmed, you know? that The fact that they were so upset if about it was this a player. trip. Even if it's like staff, you know, and they... It could be staff. Somebody... And they also hinted at it, like in his post-game practices, he said their heads are in vacations. He was d d hinting towards the vacation in, in Vegas. But like, even the staff... You don't want the staff to be like, oh, I can't go to Vegas now. You want them to be a little bit more understanding of, hey, our team is sucking and we can't do that. I think I think that they made a mediocre team and they're getting mediocre results and that's enough to get them into the playoffs. You made a mediocre team. Mm -hmm. Mediocre teams lose games like that. Damn. I'm sorry. Like I I oh it's like I I'm gonna punish this cat because it has black spots. Well, we bred <laughs> it with black spots. No. No, no fucking black spots in my mind. What are All we right. talking about? He's, talk he, he's talking more about the effort level. I feel like if the effort level was there in the 9-2 loss, because you can you can lose a game badly, but you can try. And I feel like Barry Trotz and Andrew Burnett were not happy with the effort that the team is giving. Not necessarily that they lost, but how they lost. And that's fair. The that's Leafs, fair. The Dan? Leafs had a game, oh, it was in Buffalo. And I'm, remember the one where they got completely obliterated? They gave up like eight goals or something like that. Not really. Okay. What well, year? It was this year. Oh, oh yeah. This year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The 9-3. Yes. 9-3, yes. I think it yes. was. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a Let's terrible game. Yes. Terrible game. Horrible. And Look at me remembering games. I remember losing my mind. And it's not just because they got killed. Mm -hmm. They stopped trying. Mm -hmm. They gave up. Start the bus. They gave up. So, you know, not having not watched that game in its entirety, it obviously wasn't up to their standard. But you've made some really compelling points, Adam. I'm just, I'm just, just saying. It's just weird when a team acts like how it was built. Some good games and some bad. Crazy. That second line's a nightmare. But the effort, I think, is yeah. what you're speaking to. And I, and I agree with that, Jesse. I think... Yeah. You, but there are, it's not as though the Predators have had an effort issue this season. They have outperformed it's every impossible. metric. It's impossible. They couldn't have possibly... They, you can't be a lazy team with that roster. You can't. No. You can't. Anyway, uh, you know what? I So I disagree with it, and I disagree with it more for the guys who are not the millionaires. Yeah. Because the millionaires could go buy tickets to that shit anytime. I, I have heard from people around the league, there are, there are and, and I never use this as like, oh, I've heard this or whatever, but you do get messages from people who go, I work for such and such organization in the, this department, mm -hmm. and they'll say stuff that they know happened, and they're like, well, there's no way I can corroborate that, so I'm not going to say anything about it. And, right. but, sure. But... It's not like players are the only ones that speak to the media. I do think it's important. Oh, yeah. I oh, think this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. This no, came, you made a very good point. I don't think this came from the players. And I don't blame the person that told them. Not one. Not one bit. Right. Oh, we should be focused on the Stanley Cup. Really? Should we, Nashville? Should we? Right. Okay. Trotz also right. provided a quote to Friedman. So, like, he's very willing to talk about it. He's owning like, he, it. He's not hiding it. I respect that. Oh, yeah. I bet he loved that. I respect that. And I, I do want to say this. I started the argument by saying this. Uh, if it were the Leafs, they'd have got shish kebab for this. 
Oh, if they had lost three games in a row and they went to U2, yeah, it would have been it would have two been games. front page news. Two games. They, they, two did, fucking they did games. not lose three games in a row. Like crazy. No, no. And here's the thing. Is former Leafs come in and hang two goals on the Leafs all the time. Mm-hmm. Matt Duchesne does it once and the Preds are like, you fucking never going to... St- you and Bono will never meet. What's yeah, the, it's almost like my freakouts are reasonable reactions. <laughs> what's the equivalent to Matt Duchesne going to karaoke in Nashville uh, after two goals on the Leafs? Oh, damn. Every game It'd be... uh, in Toronto for the first five or six years of Tyler Sagan's career. <laughs> yeah, man. He was <laughs> Holy great. Shit. No, well, it's, that's not an ex-Leaf. What are yeah, you no. You, oh, that's okay. not, that's, oh, that's two not Garass, the equivalent. <laughs> two Garass's entire career. No, oh, okay. Two, so uh, two, two Garas coming in and getting a shutout, I you, guess. You know what it Which was, Jesse? Here's, here's, a, here's a great comparable, and this is a niche one. The Leafs were super mediocre but still thought they could make the playoffs at this point. Trading John Michael Lyles Whoa. and then having him come back a week later and score a goal. I and guess. then go out to, like, Zanzibar. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> like, that was... <laughs> There's a that, Zanz- I don't think a lot of guys post, like, selfie videos from the Rippers. <laughs> I'm at the Rippers. Yeah, woo! <laughs> uh, the Leafs lost to the Buffalo Sabres on December 21st, 9-3. to three. Yeah, Mary That would have been their Christmas. cancel Vegas game. Dark days. All right. Um, here. We wrapping it? Oh. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow? Vancouver. Tomorrow. Vancouver blew a giant lead. Uh, dude. Steve I had it on my phone. Steve I wanted to, to bring it up. Steve wants to laugh at them. Oh, no, I don't want to laugh wow. at them. Wow. Oh, the whole no, no, city no. of Vancouver? Do you hate the Canucks? You know what? That's spicy. We'll, we'll save it. All right. What, what, what do you have to say? Well, okay. Besides, if, they blew a giant lead. If your favorite team... They're going to be fine. If your favorite team took a penalty with two minutes and three seconds to go in the second period, about a minute and ten seconds to go in the second period, nine seconds to go in the second period, and 48 seconds into the third period, and then blew a massive lead because of it, would you lose your mind? I'd probably lose my mind. And if I was a Canucks fan, I'd be right pissed today. <laughs> Because, dude, there's a decent little argument that they got jobbed. Hmm. It, oh, man. 10 7. 10 7. You're adjusted, man. Maybe I was wrong about goal scoring going down across the league. Maybe I'll go up. Does yeah. anybody know the run time of that game? Does anyone know the run time of that uh, game? Oh, that would be. Were you working this game? I wasn't working it, but oh. a 10 7 would be a crazy run time. Yeah, length, that's a good like, point. Game. That would be like four hours, probably. The shots were only 27 to 24. Like, that is a tame game. Because think about all the time it takes, like, between each goal, right? Those 17 goals in that game, plus penalties, plus all that stuff. Oh, like, my God. That's mm-hmm. a good point. That's yeah. at least a three hour game. Yeah. So, if anybody knows, if anybody could comment that. Uh, I can I can tell you this, oh, okay. this stuff. I didn't um, find that what, out. It's one oh nine CT Central Time. It ended at three forty six. Ooh, okay. So pretty much on time. Did, oh, yeah. Really? Not much later. Oh. Yeah, that's not, like maybe that's half not an hour. Bad. Well, it's usually impressive. games are three, one right? to four. It didn't go to overtime. Fair. Had it gone, to but over. still yeah. seventeen that's goals. That's crazy though. How fast that one. Yeah. yeah. You know what though? You know what they didn't do? There probably wasn't a, a lot any any review which would push it over, and there probably wasn't a lot of penalties called. The yeah. oh, there were a lot of penalties. Were there a lot of penalties? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the no, but like yeah. late game, late game. Yeah, that, that was uh, all the five on threes Minnesota scored on. Oh. There were two penalties in the entire third period. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> That's no, crazy. there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, That's ten, above. eleven penalties in this game. That's a lot. What are you guys talking about? The third period, but a lot of were they con- five on three? Yeah, were they concurrent though? Were they two at a time or were yes, they- yes, because obviously because there's five on threes. The right? third period began. 5-3 Vancouver. The game ended 10-7 Minnesota. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. That, if you had given me the, just the score and the layout of the game, I'd have been like Leafs and I don't know. <laughs> That's what I would have said. One of the more fun of the things of the game, uh, Gustafson gets pulled. Marc-Andre Fleury comes in, gets the W. Love that. I always, always love when the backup goalie gets to come in and, and get the relief pitcher win. Mm. Will Marc-Andre nice. Fleury get the Devils to the Stanley Cup Finals this year? Is my question. Doubt it. Because Markstrom, they, I don't think it's going to happen. If they uh, if they make the playoffs, we'll see. Um, what was the other thing about that game? Uh, oh, if you started Casey DeSmith in fantasy, like God bless you. Oh, <laughs> ten goals. Oh, well, no, he was of, a net for all. You know, a couple of them are empty netters, but Demko because they have a game today. Mm-hmm. Um, so Demko never touched the ice. I think he oh. allowed. I forget how many. I forget how many is empty nets, but Casey DeSmith was in that game the whole time. Uh, I also want to throw this out there. Uh, Don't. Did you guys watch the Pittsburgh-LA game? Eight goals. No. 
Oh. Eight goals uh, to Smith allowed. Allowed. He ooh, ooh. eight on twenty five. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. He stopped 17 of 25, which like I would have been happy with on a like a test in high school. <laughs> but he had yeah. a 680 save percentage. And that happened on a Monday. So if you got a fantasy week that goes Monday to Sunday, like your Ooh. team's fucking your goalie stats are boned for oh. seven days. Oh heavens to <laughs> Betsy. Oh. Sam Lafferty, minus two, bum. I just uh <laughs> minus two. <laughs> minus two, bum. Let's just fire the extra. Just want to say, but oh, yeah, I have like was, three more topics. Was anybody there a plus on the? Oh on yeah, the Canucks. Oh yeah, there's a bunch. Oh yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, they scored seven. <laughs> they scored seven. Goals. Yeah, yeah. And fire also, that extra. Four yeah. of the Wilds' uh, power play goals were power play goals. Um, find SDP VIP on Spotify right now. You can Woo! go listen to the first two episodes for free, and then uh, you can eventually subscribe. Also, big apologies to any Pens fan who did watch the LA Penguins game. Oh yeah, Christian Jari played great all game. Last shot, bang, in. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll do Yager. Oh, yes! The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.